Welcome, welcome everybody. Can you guys hear me? Okay, audio's good. Welcome everybody to Classic Cast. This is uh, Classic Cast number 12, I believe. We're here with Tips Out, we're here with Stay Safe. How you doing? And we're here with uh, our guest, John Stats, who is a 3D level designer, former 3D level designer for, uh, for Blizzard, for World of Warcraft, specifically working on Vanilla WoW, uh, all the way up through Cataclysm, I believe. Is that right, John? Yes. All the way up through Cataclysm. So, um, so yeah, we're here. We're very excited to have John on. John, can you uh, can you give kind of like a uh, an explanation of, of what really you did for uh, when working on Vanilla WoW? Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's uh, good to be on a um, Twitch program. I haven't been on one <laughs> yet, but uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I was Blizzard's first three D level designer. I was hired in two thousand. And I was hired to figure out some of their problems that they were having in translating a team that had traditionally only built 2D games into 3D uh, games. And yeah, it was, uh, I worked through vanilla, built half the dungeons pretty much, um, and all the expansions through Cataclysm. Um, boy, yeah, and I, and I guess I'm ostensibly on this show to promote my my book, The Wow Diary, which mm -hmm. is uh, live right now on uh, Kickstarter. Check it out. Just the wow, the wow diary dot com. All right. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> so would you, would you mind real quick moving your mic a little bit closer to your mouth? I have you turned up as loud as possible and okay. they're saying a little All bit. All right. Yeah. Scuffed podcast, boys. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. John, so if you were hired in 2000, did you work on All Warcraft right. 3 at all? Uh, I did a lot of playtesting. Uh, they took us off of WoW for a while. They needed a lot of playtests on uh, Warcraft 3. I did a lot of uh, mostly through the campaigns. I wasn't very good at the multiplayer games, but we did have some... There's one anecdote I have in the book where uh, a newly hired artist, Toph, and I would... We were playing games with a, a food cap of, I think, 12 which was mm. or, or 20 or something. It was a really, really, really low food cap because people were treating Warcraft three like Starcraft, where it was all production. Right. And right. it was this weird uh, pool between you. Oh, the way to win is to outproduce the other person. But the fun part was manipulating all the units. And so we did this little test and we had so much fun that we went and talked to Rob Pardo and I would add him and pitch this idea of really really reducing the number of like when you decide what m units you're going to build really cut it down it was kind of like uh the first moba like we were just like mm. it, it was you know league of legends or you know heroes of the storm it was it was just so reduced and they did reduce the food cap by like 60 it was like 200 or something they brought it down way down um but and obviously they didn't go with the moba pitch well of um, course it did it did sort of lead into maybe the first moba which was dota which was the the warcraft mod right the warcraft 3 yeah mod. yeah yeah and that came later which was our model for all track valley yeah that was oh, really our grandiose okay. The That's idea awesome. was, uh, it's kind of funny when we were when we decided to punt on PvP. Alan kind of picked up everybody's spirits and said, "Look, when we do PvP, it's going to be so awesome. We're going to it's going to be like you're in a Warcraft three game. This is just one way that we can do it, where you're one of the units in the game, lots of NPCs running around. You're part of this this big war." that's kind of like what we want to do. And that kind of resonated and we were happy that sustained our morale for a little bit when we realized that, okay, if we don't do PVP, well, eventually it'll be done, but just not for the shipping product. But that was kind of what he recalled uh, and resonated with our first uh, foray into PVP. Well, yeah, because awesome. Vanilla WoW launched for the first four months, there were no battlegrounds. It was only open world PVP, right? Right, right. And for the first few months, we weren't even playtesting internally. We were just putting out so many flyers really? at wow. the time. Yeah, I mean, it took us eight months to ship 
our PVP stuff. If, if I, I wrote an article on Wowhead about the origins of uh, Warsong Gulch, which was based on one of my old Quake Capture the Flag mods, which I just started because I was frustrated. A lot of the devs were frustrated, frustrated with the just the bombacity of Alterac Valley. It was so big and there's so many different things going on. No one could understand it. And frankly, there were so many features necessary to even figure out what was going on, like UI enhancements, just logic to events that just weren't, we couldn't play test them because they weren't written yet. So we just made a tiny little battlefield and said, well, we'll capture the flag works works that well, let's let's try to do that <laughs> and just a couple artists one artist and a level designer got the ball rolling and the game designer said you know what i bet you quest guys could actually you know hack together a real fast way of uh, prototyping a captured flag man. so that was just completely happened organically that's crazy so that's awesome. so prior prior to vanilla release bgs weren't even an idea that you guys had you had the thought like a couple months in or what um, we didn't know if it was going to be real world PVP. We didn't know like battlegrounds as a formal thing. Wasn't mm -hmm. no, no. We we didn't. We we thought it, they might have to be instanced. We had no idea how many people would be in. I mean, we didn't do a raid. We didn't have a forty player raid. We had no idea. There was no UI for a raid uh, when we shipped Vanilla WoW. There was not a lot of support, so we had no idea what we were doing. So, well, actually, we had lots of ideas. We could only do one of them, so there was never a quorum as far as oh, let's all go this direction because everybody kind yeah. of had to do their own thing. So yeah. you designed several du dungeons, but one of which was Blackrock Depths. You did that entirely by yourself, right? Oh, yeah. Pretty much all my dungeons were, uh, at least when I build them. Then there's a texture artist. Right. Uh, I start yeah. with concept art, obviously. And then there's a whole scripting team that they w look at the lay of the land and they say, oh, you know what? We could do a, we could do a, 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 a kiting uh, event here at the Razor Gore yeah. uh, okay. fight. So, th yeah. That yeah. So how many people do you usually have working on a dungeon? Or did you have working on a dungeon in vanilla? Like a total um, team, well, roughly. Well, well, we everybody would work on their own dungeons, uh -huh. like pretty much. Like as far as like the dungeon team, there 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 there's about four level designers, three D level designers. We were meshing out that the wireframe of the dungeon, and we had three or four texture artists painting textures, and then the level designers would then apply those textures to their geometry. So and, and one guy built a dungeon, pretty much. So you physically designed Blackrock Depths prior to even knowing that groups were going to be five man, right? I think I read that in your sample book. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much all the dungeons were. We had no idea. Like all the early dungeons, like uh, AQ was my first dungeon. Uh, had no concept whatsoever how many people would be in a raid. I'd never wow. played EverQuest. I didn't know. Uh, so yeah we were just hoping that we had seen parties work together in dark age of camelot and we felt that that, that i think the party size was eight in D in D Dayuk, yes but it was it felt a little bit too big so we well maybe we'll settle on five but we had no idea if they were linear or if they're not so many questions were unanswered Wait, so I just caught something. You, you said that AQ40 was your first designed raid. So you you built that raid before Blackrock Depths or I think oh, yeah. Wailing Caverns as well. So you had that yeah, like a year and a half in advance or two years in advance. Oh, yeah. AQ was done uh, several years, about four years. I mean, uh, Karazhan wow. was yeah. started before we sh shipped uh, Vanilla WoW. Yeah. A number of times, actually, the, 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 the version that you are playing uh, today that is mm -hmm. out there now, that was started well before Vanilla WoW shipped. Like it, it, was, yeah. it is getting textured. We had cut down on the size. And, and the version of Karazhan that we, we see now isn't even the original version of Karazhan. Yeah, it's like the third time. The first time I built it was 
in 2000, in the year 2000, I built uh, on, <laughs> with throwback, right? Yeah, uh, well, well, Conan there. Uh, yeah. I built using BSP technology. We would run the Quake engine, and that's how we would look at our levels in a BSP editor. So uh, they looked awful. They looked like Quake levels. I mean, yeah. they, they looked very, they were dark sharp edges hard edges no smoothing groups nothing was smooth it looked like a first person shooter and i they wanted the worst case scenario okay so how big can we build dungeons we we didn't know so i was building carazon using a bsp editor and that at that time it had a completely different concept it was a tower with three side towers on it one tower was a mage wing one tower was the demon wing and the other tower was probably like the, the military uh, wing, but that never compiled. Uh, it took 40 minutes just to load. Uh, <laughs> it, it crashed frequency. I mean, it was painful. And also yeah. I'm working well past midnight. Like I, right. I crazy hours, easy, easy 90, uh, 90 gamer hours. hours, gamer hours. Yeah. yeah. Gamer <laughs> hours. And, yeah, if, if your job was to make games, those were the hours that I was working. So, right. and no, no, it, we couldn't even run it. Uh, the editor barely ran it. So we built Carazon, uh, never could run it. We abandoned BSP nine months down the tubes. Somebody else builds Carazon. It's too thin. We didn't know how big to make combat. And this is this is some of the casualties when you're starting with. Uh, 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 such a long lead time right you build things and you realize oh wow we can't use this this doesn't fit our gameplay so we scrapped the entire it was textured and everything it was scrapped Jeez. and then about the last year on the project i started it again I, I i did the layout and then aaron keller he took my layout and he fleshed out the inside while i was building the outside and I built a, a raid wing at the top. At the top of Karazhan, the, in, in, there was a, like an asteroid field type of thing going on. Where like Prince, another, Prince Maltazar is, right? Yeah, like it's another right. dimension. You're supposed right. to teleport on that, that asteroid out in the center with the spikes oh, on it. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. It was yeah. supposed to be like – I tried to do an HR Giger type of like weird – because it was high concept and all our high concept stuff kind of fell flat on its face. Yeah. Uh, Emerald, Dream, <laughs> Emerald Dream just looked silly, you yeah. know, because I mean, floating trees, ooh, you know, right. but it wasn't dreamlike because it wasn't overwhelming. So like a lot of our high concept stuff. So we, we scrapped that. Right. And, and speaking of like scrapping things and stuff like that, when you guys, uh, when you guys go into level design, do you have any idea like, how many bosses are going to be in the dungeon what level range it's going to be if it's a raid or a dungeon or do they just say does chris Metchin just come up to you and go here's my sketch make this make this place oh god chris chris Metzen would never go into sketches no he, he wouldn't okay. get that far not even in that 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 much detail the, he didn't even want to talk about bosses like he'd have a couple places where oh this guy's definitely the end boss mm -hmm. uh Karazhan used to be uh, a demon named Malganus. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh yeah, so switcheroo there and he would honestly half the time he would just say uh you just we'll, we'll make something up. We'll, we'll use whatever mobs make sense. But we didn't know what level range it was. We it was mostly what's the flavor of the dungeon? Uh, a general idea of what the level range, like the newbie dun dungeons, were supposed to be smaller. Um, the one, Wailing Caverns, for some reason, they kept wanting to make it bigger and bigger. And yeah. I, was happy, I was happy to oblige them because it hadn't been play tested. I had no concept at all, like how big to make it. Right. You know? So in Wailing Caverns, you know the jump you have to make where you can fall down? Was that yeah. you? Did you design oh, yeah. that? Yeah, that was my attempt to see it. it is this is this fun at all and it was easy to test and what's funny is that when you're in southern california or even when you're a blizzard employee you have perfect perfect connections right absolutely perfect and that seems so childishly simple and i did a little hop 
thing in Black Fathom Deeps. Like you mm -hmm. can kind of hop or across the the water just just to see if it was for fun because you're trying to think of oh the yeah the stones yeah yeah yeah, 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 just, yeah, to do, yeah, yeah. just to have give people something different to do. Yeah. But people I, still fail that, by the way. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. oh, absolutely. It's very challenging content. <laughs> MM, MMOs are actually very imprecise <laughs> with position. They're very, very imprecise. If you multi-box and you're running next to, to you, 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 you can see that there's different positions right. for your players. Like you think you're next to a tree on one box and on the other, no, you're not next to the tree. You're, you're further away. Right. And you can't, yeah. So, so precise hit detection and, you know, sidelines and stuff, you, you can't get away with that on an MMO. Right. So uh, whenever you, um, I kind of want to go back a little bit to Karazhan. Sure. Whenever you, uh, whenever you made, I guess, what was the third iteration of Karazhan, did you know yeah. at the time that, that they were going to change the, that you guys decided to change the raid size, or did you just make it and? No, I think it. I think they had done ZG Zolkarub came before Karazhan. I think. Yeah. Oh, well, well before uh, Karazhan, and it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it was. It was 20. So 20 was uh, what, like, that was a thing. You could do a 20 person raid. Right. Uh, they decided that there was just some rooms that weren't big enough for 40 people. There's, there's cool stuff going on in the floor. You the, like the, the, the chess event. I don't think you, you could actually, yeah, they just, I mean, just the, the, and, and also there's a lot of narrow passages and stuff that when you're winding, it just, you didn't need uh, 40 people. And so that's, that, it was just like, a, eh, let's do it 20 people. You know, it wasn't a lot of ramifications, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll see what works that, that, that's kind of how we designed everything. That's, that's the only way. Cause you can never predict, you can never, ever, ever, ever predict. You can't predict what's, what's the best camera. You can't predict like whether or not we're going to use a mouse. We didn't know whether or not we were going to use a mouse with our, because we didn't know uh, how much bandwidth a mouse took a mouse when you when your character faces different directions you have to broadcast that because you if you're a thief and you're attacking somebody and uh, backstabbing them you have to constantly broadcast the updates to which way players are facing and that is a huge or a larger demand uh uh for bandwidth and we didn't know whether or not we mm -hmm. could support it because we were go going to do a mmo that was you know 100 times larger than everquests right uh, concurrent rates and everquest their their mouses were way 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 less uh, efficient than our code and we didn't know that we could actually make it more efficient so we we had backup plans so while people might not be able to use a mouse we, it might be click to move like diablo you know mm. so that was actually a feature you could do that yeah, yeah, we added yeah, that because that. the Koreans wanted to play with the cigarette in their hand. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that's, yeah, and if Koreans wanted something, we gave it to them. We thought that would be the main market for uh, World of Warcraft. Right. The popularity of Blizzard in uh, Korea, but not so much. Yeah. Right, wow. So why, why, did, why was 40 people the status quo for raids back in Modilla? How did you land on that number? We just probably, I honestly don't know. Let's see. I think it might have been the size of my first, the first Anixia's cavern. It didn't look like a, a cavern for four, 20 people, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just eyeballing it. What feels good? Does this feel good? Uh, frame rate, obviously, uh, was a huge thing. That's 40 unique tex textures. Uh, 40 animations going on so that uh, that has some bearing frame rate is a huge uh, factor in deciding like design um, right but yeah, that, that was probably one of the largest groups that we could do so we probably said well let's give it let's start with the largest you know group and see you know because that's cooler right so actually like we we touched on that a little bit before the podcast we were talking about different things and and we brought up you know comparisons to to other games prior to wow um going for just playability and making the game more accessible to people uh just as far as like computer specs goes you know you talked about frame rate that, that was a big right. point of emphasis for you guys too when we made the game 
Yeah, I mean, that's all Blizzard games uh, are. They do well because they are targeted to low-end systems. Mm -hmm. That's why Blizzard games sell. There's, yeah. there's other factors, but that's why Blizzard games sell. And it's amazing, still amazes me that most of the games don't adopt that business-like uh, yep. Yep. discipline of just... Yeah. That's the target. Don't try to impress the magazines with a high poly feature that looks real good on a magazine, but mm -hmm. doesn't play well. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody was trying to promote their product, so they would make games that were well suited for being on the cover of magazines. So, and if you look at more recently, I think another like perfect example of that is uh, the success of Fortnite versus like a, a game like PUBG. Right, yeah. where PUBG is like was, very, yeah. it, it looks great, all this stuff. The graphics are really high end, but then yeah. Fortnite's more cartoony and childish. But like, right. everybody can play it, and it runs on consoles. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, yeah. the the availability sure. is higher, the accessibility is higher, so people can that's, play. That's that's that is the formula. If you if you're puzzling how to make a game, that's how you make it. Mm -hmm. Low end yeah. systems, wide audience, always wins. Yeah, and ironically enough, it seems like even the low-end games, because they're allowed to be more liberal with their style, they don't necessarily have to adopt the realism of like high fidelity games. It right. almost just looks better. Like oh, even yeah. though it's low polygon count, it just looks better. It's more charming. It's more aesthetically pleasing. I well, think realism, hyper realism, ends up looking kind of creepy in a lot of games. Yeah, yeah personally. Yeah, and 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 you kind of lose when 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 it's a lower resolution game. Your, mar your mind fills in the blanks. There's more imagination. Like the, the monsters in Doom 1, the, the very first Doom, are so much more realistic uh, than the 3D versions of Doom because those are bound by weird animations and interpolations between combat and, you know, all kinds of crazy states. And it's just, it, it, it's, it's more visceral, I think, when your mind is filling in the blanks so yeah that's great um that's actually a great point never thought about that i agree yeah mm -hmm. um i we're guys just to just to kind of clarify because because some people are already qu asking questions in the chat uh we are going to move to q a at the end like we're, we're uh, at the end of the podcast we'll we'll go and, and we'll have a a good amount of time doing q a to where you guys can ask questions uh, you guys can tweet at us. You guys can ask questions in the chat, because um, yeah, I know I know a lot of people have have a whole lot of questions. So, um, I've got a question. Yeah, go sure. ahead. Sure, <laughs> shoot. What is the World of Warcraft diary? Oh yes, there we are. Uh, I good question. <laughs> there you no, go. I got to uh, my first job in the gaming industry was Blizzard Entertainment, and I was pretty knowledgeable of as a fan i i was n i was not a developer i thought and I, I i thought i had an idea of how games were made because i had made mods for four and a half years working crazy hours followed the plan updates of all the first person shooters uh i came to blizzard and blizzard did everything differently and every theory every theory that i had was a hundred percent wrong and I was just shocked that as every day went by, every time I tried to put A and B together, there was always ten factors that I didn't know what, uh, that I didn't know about, which was why I came up with this you know theory in the first place. So it was just being wrong all the time. Like having to, it, it wasn't that I was just learning so much. I was unlearning a lot of things too. So I thought this was so fascinating that I wanted to write a book. I, I, I thought it would just be a, a great book because I really wasn't from, uh, I'm from Northeast Ohio. There's, there's not a lot of connections between Northeast Ohio and the entertainment <laughs> industry. And, uh, even coming from Iowa at the time I was coming, to, actually, I, I actually moved from New York city. I, I lived in New York for 10 years and even in New York, there's no connection to, uh, computer game development there's just very very little of it in the city and it was it was an exotic topic and i wanted to write about it so i, I took notes every month uh during vanilla wow 
and uh, put a book together. <laughs> and that's, uh, yeah, the wow diary.com is where you go to buy it. That's it's got, I think, 10 days left. I could, I, I could be wrong. Might be nine days. <laughs> I mean, however many days you smashed your goal for the book, like yeah. immediately within the yeah. first 24 hours, you had sold over $150,000 worth of yeah. copies. That's insane. Yeah, that was my gnat with the elephant gun type of thing. Like you lower your, 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 your projected, um, you know, like you kind of cheese the system a little bit. You yeah. lower your goals so that you can say, oh, yeah, I funded, you know, in the first eight minutes or something ridiculous but all the kickstarter experts told me that's the way to do it so yeah this was my first one so that's the way i did it there you go so how long have you been sort of like seriously putting this book together uh, a long long time um four years taking notes obviously during vanilla wow then i burned out on taking notes and it didn't seem like there was going to be an end. The book ends with shipping vanilla. Wow. Because it's weird. How do you write a book about a game that's, you know, still going on with year yeah. after year, you know? So I left the industry in, uh, 2015, 2016. Uh, and I decided this would be a good book to write. And, I rewrote it over and over and over again. And wow. I think I did 18 rounds of edits, uh, four professional edits. And it is, it, it embraces the, the, the principle of concentrated coolness. There is tons and tons and tons of information mm -hmm. in, in the book, in the final version of it. And even when I was talking to Blizzard, the, the, the attorneys were Know, they they mentioned a couple things that I didn't realize. Oh, I I can fit that in the book. And every time I talked to somebody else, uh, an old teammate, I'd, I'd cram more little details in the book. So I had to be disciplined and stop talking to people uh, about you know, because the book was just it, it's a lot of pages. It's, yeah. It's, you yeah, so. you gave us a little bit of a sample, and yeah. one of the most intriguing things to me um, with any, any anything like this really, but but specifically with Wow Vanilla Wow. Uh, is the stuff that you didn't see make it to the ship's product? Yeah, I, I think I think that kind of yeah. stuff is is so in, it's just so intriguing to me. Um, we we're talking about Karazhan again, and I know I touched on Karazhan, sure. but what was the idea behind the Karazhan Crips? Like, what did you, like? Oh, what yeah. was the point of that? The okay, so for the longest time we were making dungeons under the philosophy there's no such thing as a dungeon too big and when in doubt make it bigger because we were terrified that people would burn through our content and then quit our game uh we were very terrified uh, terrified uh, so we just we created zones we didn't need we created uh the micro dungeons we call them the non-instance dungeons the gold mines the crypts and the the caves that in zones that just were not necessary. And the crypts around Karazhan were just me jamming on the crypt texture set. Mm -hmm. I made some uh, cool stuff. They're, they're half built. They're not even remotely polished. They're like mm. None of them would hold up to any standard. Right. Today. But I just started and at one point, Jeff Kaplan said, Karazhan's too big. Uh, we, <laughs> it's, the library is too big. That could be just a dungeon in and of itself. We're learning <laughs> yeah. that. Oh, yeah. With with instances, because all our philosophy was based on EverQuest and Dark Age of Camelot, where they weren't private dungeons. Uh, mm -hmm. You had to compete f with content with other. So you needed huge, huge, huge dungeons. And it just never occurred to us that, oh, yeah, with a with a private dungeon with an instance, they don't have to be that big. You're going to fight everything yeah. that's in yeah. there. And yeah. you would think something like that would dawn on the, <laughs> the, the best minds and the brightest minds of Blizzard. But it just <laughs> that thought escaped us. We had just been chasing the rabbit, yeah. focused on that that little. So, yeah, Karazhan had flooded sections in the instance. We had flooded rooms. We wanted oh, okay. to play around with water. Uh, like like with the upside down centers. Yeah, well, that was outside of Karazhan. Yeah. That was that was my uh, big trouble, little China tribute. And 
Uh, yeah, we didn't need any of that stuff. Uh, right. It was just crazy. Uh, so yeah, we Deadwind didn't really get. There were there weren't any spawns. I think maybe some ogres in Deadwind. That was it. There's yeah. many zones that we didn't. That was just some of them. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. in Vanilla WoW, a lot of dungeons are very very open ended. I, Blackrock Depths is the first one that comes to mind. Yeah. Um, was that a goal to not have dungeons be hallway, hallway, boss, hallway, hallway, boss, but ha rather have you, you can kind of explore through the caverns and stuff like that? Was uh, that intentional? We all had our different, like all the guys built their own way. <laughs> it was just like, you know, we, we just, we'd rock and roll with my, that was my personal way. I didn't like hallways. I don't build hallways a lot in, in, in any of my dungeons. I think rooms are far more interesting than hallways. Uh, and I, I built them from old Dungeons and Dragons where it has to be a believable environment. It has to look like the uh, inhabitants live there. They have to have a water source. They have to have right. uh, thoroughfares. They have to have some sense of that's that's the other gate in Black Rock Depths is my, you know, we had a city gate. That was a concept. But I'm thinking, well, wait a minute what do you have in front of a gate you have a road but where the hell does that road go to i can't just <laughs> yeah. have a road and keep going on and on with the road i have to finish with something so i just put a another gate a duplicate gate that was closed so that was my suspension of disbelief that yeah the city is actually bigger yeah. than what you're going to see and i did that a lot with brd so uh yeah i i that was just my personal goal other people, you know, like that wasn't, you know, they, they built their own way. Right. Did, did you design Sunken Temple? Uh, no, that was Jose. No. Okay. Uh, Jose was one of our uh, uh, level designers. He, he came t uh, to us from the uh, art staff. Um, the, the Sunken Temple, it's oddly enough, that was the, we knew it was the most confusing dungeon <laughs> because whenever, whenever you array a dungeon, um, I, I don't like I don't like doing an array. What what I mean array is uh, when it's radial, okay. Mm -hmm. When you copy and paste a section, it it's kind of disorienting. The player forgets which way they're facing. Right, and right. I yeah. tried not to do round rooms or symmetrical rooms. Uh, I did some of that in BRD at the end, the final rooms. But and it's a faster, obviously, way faster way to build. Um, but that was we knew it was a confusing dungeon. So when we were testing out our mini map, we took uh, Bill Petrus, who was our art director. Bill, Bill volunteered. He said, I am the easily, I, I am the most easily confused person when it comes to navigation. I'm terrible in first person shooters. I am the guinea pig for this. And so that's, <laughs> he went into Sunken Temple and he tested the mini map where it actually, the, the, and this was a huge win where you could actually see uh, that the arrow was pointing to where you were moving. Mm. And so, so, and there's a lot of ways you can do mini maps. You can have always the, the arrow point north and you rotate the dungeon around the arrow, or you can actually have the arrow spinning and the dungeon is fixed on, you know, the north, south, east, west orientation. We did, we did it with the latter half, so the, the latter way. So, uh, yeah, Bill wasn't confused. So he pronounced the mini map a go. So and that was our <laughs> <laughs> that was our big deal. But we didn't have over maps back then, which mm -hmm. were yeah. yeah, like like when you hit the M key and you zoom into the dungeon, we actually didn't have that. I think right. when it shipped. I don't I don't think there was no dungeon maps. Yeah, there were yeah. like no yeah. dungeon yeah. maps in vanilla. We and had to have cool one. For, no, we yeah. we we wouldn't have had that feature if it weren't what uh, if we hadn't had had so much problems with Stormwind. Stormwind was the Roach Motel that yeah. once you check in, you, you can't find your way out. Yeah. And it was hated by the development team for a long time because they just, people didn't want to go, <laughs> like yeah. testers didn't want to go in there because then they'd get lost. It, it's so and, funny that you mentioned, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, that's that's just why we had that over map yeah. at all. Yeah. yeah. Right. I was going to say, it's so funny they mentioned how Stormwind was like that, because now in, in WoW, in, in the current version of the game, Stormwind has kind of become the main hub for the Alliance as far as, like, capital cities go. Oh, uh, good. And I always remember, <laughs> yeah, I always remember, like, how it was Ironforge, you know, and I've played yeah, Alliance oh, yeah. the whole way through. And yeah. just because of, like, 
just the shape of it, it being around, it just felt like everything was like kind of equidistant in some in some form. Yeah, I thought yeah. Iron Forge was really well laid out. And the Undercity even <clears throat> learned from uh, Iron Forge. That was the last one. Uh, that was the site of uh, a big debate between Metzen and the level designers, who wanted a very concise. We wanted a hub. Uh, Chris's vision was this disheveled shambles, uh, sewers that just very uh, uh, dark, not the high uh, the high gothic goth look that the Undercity has mm -hmm. today. I mean. Not um, anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, I know it got, it, it, <laughs> a little it, it bit. Got, uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So yeah, we learned from Undercity. We learned from uh, Iron Forge, and we didn't know which one was going to be the most populated city. We had a, a sneaking suspicion that the Night Elf uh, area was not going to be well used. There weren't any raid dungeons up there. Uh, mm -hmm. Although we were going to do Hygel, so right. maybe it was going to... But Hygel got way delayed. Yeah, we didn't need Hygel for... <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, what was the original plan behind Hygel? Like, did you did you guys want to make it a zone or a raid or... Yeah, it was like a... It was a raid zone, an exterior raid. But what was there on ship was just like flat, completely untextured, like one prop or two as placeholders saying, you know, here's the... Here's where you jump in the instance or something. We had not a lot of plans. I mean, mm -hmm. we were doing a million things at the same time. So Right. I know inside of Hygel, because I, I, I may have uh, done some tricky things to, to find my way into it uh, in the 1.12 client. <laughs> but uh, I, I remember, uh, well, two things. One, I thought it was funny they had the under construction sign. Uh, at the bottom of uh, oh, yeah. yeah, the yeah. bottom of Winter Spring, uh -huh. and then also uh, whenever you get into it, there is a uh, there's a dragon cave very similar to the Anixia cave, and a lot of people assume that might have been like Deathwing's cave. Like if you even remember, this might be such a minor detail. No, it's the exterior designers. It's it's so funny. It's so trivial to place things in the world. Like they all just drop. Some people ask, why, are, why is there a uh, dark portal in Loch Madon in, in our very first gameplay movie? You can see it very faded in the background. And it's because it's a cool prop. It wasn't one of the, the, the iconic props from Warcraft 3. So we just threw it in Loch Madon. We didn't know which zone it was going to be in. And we, that's where we filmed that movie. And then we just got rid of it. We had no idea where the final port, uh, the black, uh, dark portal was actually going to be. So, an exterior level designer can just open up uh, a tab, copy areas, buildings, uh, props, place it there, then forget about it, and then move on. It will just be, just because they had that in their pasteboard, they'll paste and they'll say, "Oh, that's that's the thing." Okay, uh, <laughs> I'll go. I'll work on something else now. You know, or right. it's much time. I, I'll save and then I'll move on. So there's not a lot of like lore goes in after everything is pretty much built. Uh, like they'll they'll give right. us a blueprint and then they'll polish the lore and say, "Okay, this is what we can pull off." You know, this is we'll shoehorn some uh, a story in there. All right, <laughs> throw throw a few retcons in there, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, um, sorry. Go ahead, Tips. It's really interesting you say that. I mean, there's so many like small secrets and, and like un kind of untold mysteries about vanilla. There's the portal in Stormwind that was gonna like lead to player housing or something yeah, like that. That's what it was gonna be. Yeah. What's like. Can you give us like some some little secrets like or, or things that just never made it to the game like you know some cut content that you would have loved to see in the game or any kind of little easter eggs that that players don't really know the background about um my it's kind of funny the feature i always wanted was strong uh, sound support coming from a first person shooter community we had uh the ability to place sound emitters and the the cool thing with that is that you could uh, like rushing wind. If you're on a ledge, you hear the rushing wind. It's just, it gets the adrenaline going and you don't realize it at, at the time as a player. I wanted to do that when you get close to the lava, you hear that, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. but yeah. that's not something, that's a feature that our game just didn't have. Right. Uh, I wanted uh, another, I drove the, <laughs> 
<laughs> the prop guys are probably going, oh my God, he's going to talk about the water drop. I wanted a water drop that was going to come from an indeterminate location that plops on the ground, uh, makes the drop sound when it happens, because I could place that in all the gold mines, all the, ca you know, all the caves. Yeah. Oh, I see them, saying, yeah. But yeah. It, it's just that we didn't have the guys. We, our, our particle effects system was not very strong. You couldn't, we didn't have a previewer in the editor, like for all our spell effects, uh, Kevin Beardsley was our lead animator. He basically did all the spell, spell effects practically blind. Uh, he had to go through a multiple compile process and then he would jump in game, type the number of the spell, and then he would see how the spell would look around his character and anyone who's worked with particle effects that particle effect could be invisible for a number of reasons it could be uh stretched or just wrong and one little variable could just completely change the look of that uh, but he did every spell effect for every class in the game that way because we just didn't have a tool that that automated it and made it faster. So the the things I wanted were like tools like that. Um, I pitched a whole bunch of bad ideas. It's funny. I used to, <laughs> Eric Dodds, he and I hit it off really well uh, since well, my interview actually on, on the team. And he was learning, he would, he'd come from QA. He hadn't shipped a game before and he was learning under Alan Adham's wing and he would just take all the terrible ideas that I had, and they were truly terrible ideas. Uh, I had ideas for like, oh, every stupid thing that you can think from Dungeons and Dragons, like artifacts. I wanted super rare items in the game. It just yeah. makes no sense for a, 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 an MMO. Like, why would you have something that only one person has? <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, it's, it, it, there's not a lot of bang for the buck. Uh, to support that type of uh, content, and so I, I speaking yeah, of artifacts. Ahead, yeah. yeah, speaking all of right. artifacts, I remember in the original because uh, I, I a friend of mine had a copy of the original uh, like whatever strategy guide, and it had a list of like all like you know uncommon, rare, epic, whatever, and it did have artifact. Right. So that was an original plan. Is that is was to have a artifacts. placeholder? Uh, was, was artifact? Uh, that wasn't or. Yeah. Was that orange? No, no, I think it was gold. Legendary. Yeah. Right? legendary. Yeah. Wait, yeah legendary, legendary was gold. Okay, or so orange and artifact then was, was gold, just we knew there was going to be something Red. over legendary because we didn't know whether or not we would constantly it's be red. going. We thought at one point we'd just go through every color in the rainbow as the players level to 60, 70, 80, 90. You know, we thought we'd just be shifting through all these different colors rather than keeping the green, blue, you know purple uh w which is good that they went because <laughs> you run out of colors eventually so that we just threw artifact in there as eh, maybe you know <laughs> we'll come up with something by the time <laughs> we have to yeah but that's kind of how we did everything yeah so speaking of uh speaking of legendaries and stuff uh there's one legendary talisman of the binding shard that uh was accidentally put in the game and then uh Who's the guy who got it? It was from Nerfed, but but one player got it. Can you tell us anything about that? I cannot. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Um, how did he get it? Yeah, well, I, mean, I guess it was like accidentally in the loot table uh, in Molten uh, Core, and then <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that was just a, a a goof. That was a bug. Yeah. Uh, probably just picked on the wrong pull down menu and hit artifact or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the stats were. Yeah. Right. That was just a bug. Right. The, um, so, you know, again, kind of going back to, to Hydral and, and stuff that, you know, didn't make it to the game. Uh, there's a few zones, kind of like Hydral, uh, you know, what eventually became Gilneas. There's an area, uh, I believe it's right under Ungoro, which you can see these on the map whenever you open up the map, but you can't right. actually click on them. Yeah. What were the original plans for these zones? And uh, I guess, I, like, we know one is Gilneas, and then what, after Cataclysm, became Oldham, I guess, is under Ungoro. Was that was that originally going to be Oldham as well? Uh, no. Um, 
we knew that Angoro had ties to the Titans. Mm -hmm. uh, there was that balcony. That's where the Titans were supposed to watch the experiments. And Angoro, uh, Angoro was <clears throat> described as the petri dish, dish for the world. And that's just the lore. We knew that there was something going on with Titans. Uh, that sometimes dovetails, and, and honestly, that's something that like maybe five five people on the team know about oh and really okay a level designer will go oh if there are titans down there let me play around with titan stuff and they'll drop some titan stuff uh titan art assets down there and they'll just play around to just get their mind going right and you know there's no plan there's absolutely no plan at all like if they come up with something cool it's kind of like i described it as a, a jazz band or or a <laughs> or a garage rock band uh, lots of jamming. people just jamming on ideas and that was a word that we used to describe uh coming up with a cool idea we would say oh i'm jamming on this idea and we're or i'm riffing on that color scheme that so and so had for the uh the knolls you know that 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 works with me so i'm just riffing on that and that is kind of how we all worked you know there wasn't a lead uh I think the the only leads for, for the team was uh, John Cash for tech. And uh, like there was never a f formal leads meeting where leads would sit down and decide what was, you know, what the game was going to be. You, it was just developers. We'd all go in there and we'd see who's working on what. And if they were coming up with cool ideas, we wanted to know, can we steal that idea and do stuff on my, on my area? And that's just kind of, how everybody worked so, yeah so back in 2000 plans. sorry to backtrack back in 2000 sure. 2001 early development did you guys plan on there being expansions or did, were you thinking there was oh, going to be patch after patch we, no 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 we knew that there were going to be expansions because well, yeah. diablo had already proven that you know you could do that with it you know an rpg and Baldur's gate was doing it um no we had so many ideas that we pushed off and said oh we'll do that on another expansion you know and we did not have a clear distinction like working on a patch and working on an expansion is exactly the same process at least for a developer it's mm -hmm. a lot different for the producers because producers are working with pr and ad campaigns and they're talking to the, the parent company and hq about you know when the game's going to ship mm -hmm. uh they're like expansions are still kind of like a uh, old world you know the boxed game model you know there's really not no reason to have a boxed <laughs> expansion anymore i mean i don't even know if they sell them as as boxes i mean you just you download everything so uh yeah we didn't have uh, yeah expansions were i guess early on that that's how we thought we'd make money yeah right and the expansions changed a lot like over the years the game is so different now than it was back in 2004 and a lot of things over time have changed like the original vision for certain things i know like for example in vanilla grim Batol, uh mm -hmm. it was there but it was inaccessible s fan mentioned high um what was your original plan for grim Batol and and kind of are there things that you've seen that you designed personally that have changed over time from what they were originally intended to be well, I, I don't know what Grim Batol is now. I mean, it shipped as uh, that was that was a mid-range dungeon. Uh, have they done something different with it? I, I guess it never. It was there on the map, but it was never really accessible till. Yeah, Canada. we didn't yeah. get it done. No, we. Uh, so oh, it was supposed oh, okay. to be a mid-range dungeon. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe I'm. Uh, what was what was the dungeon in the Feralis? What was the name of that? Dire Mall. Dire Mall. Dire Mall. Okay, yeah. I'm getting those mixed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Grimbatol. Okay, okay, okay. That's Grimbatol right. was oh. in the wetlands behind the mountain. Okay, yeah. that's right. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah, Dire. Okay, I was talking about Dire Mall. Okay, mm -hmm. so Grimbatol was just an area that it was. We didn't need it, so we didn't fully develop it. We knew there were going to be expansions, so we would we would push it off what the story was who lived there obviously is it's an ogre uh i assume is it is it ogres Egrimbatol? um 
I think it was it was, it it was, Dwarven, it was Dwarven City. Dwarven oh, Town. Really? Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was taken over by dragons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so again, yeah, some of these names that they tomato, just, tomato, ogres. It may, it and... may have been ogres at one point. Yeah. <laughs> um, it just maybe mis. I'm probably just misremembering it. Yeah. But yeah, there there just there's so many areas that eh, if you get to it, we get to it. If it's part of vanilla, wow, you know then cool if not we'll push it off to something else but a lot of these were just names that Metzen liked like Valgard was our test the first test city and it was just a name there was no lore behind it we were just let's call it something you know give it a cool name so yeah pretty cool name <laughs> <laughs> um so kind of um uh something else that, that I was thinking about was uh, I, I really liked how uh, one one kind of art style, I guess, in particular that I really liked was the the Draconic stuff, you know, Blackwing Lair, UBRS. Right. You you made Blackrock Spire, right? Yes. All the, the Blackrock dungeons, yeah. All of them. Okay. So basically the entire mountain, that was you. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Me with Brian Morris excellent texture set. I could do that because he painted like – Oh, geez, 50, 60 textures, something ridiculous. So I had a lot of uh, material to work with. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really love all that stuff. Um, and UBRS was personally my favorite dungeon. Would Did you guys intend for lower and upper to be completed together? Or is that just kind of like what happened where, where people split it, it up just because it was so everything big? Everything just evolved. Uh, upper Black Rock Spire was my first uh, <clears throat> foray into architecture. I'd been doing silithid hives, um, razor fins, uh, whaling caverns. Mm -hmm. It was all organic stuff. I was good at the organic stuff. Um, I guess I grew. I grew up. I went through a lot of cave tours when I was on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> there's not a many, There's not a lot of caves near Southern California, so not a lot <laughs> of the other developers got the benefit that uh, my. Uh, my family out here in Ohio had, but no, I, I, I love those caves, but I also was a fan of architecture and uh, upper black rock spire. We didn't know whether or not we could put players next to a ledge or a precipice. And so it was kind of ho-hum. I, I, I think the architecture is very, very bland because I never could do anything dramatic with yeah. it. Uh, the very final boss room was the, uh, it, it, it was before you went above Lower Black Rock Spire. There was no Lower Black Rock Spire. There was no intention for Lower Black right. They, mm -hmm. uh, Rob Pardo and Jeff Kaplan said, John, we need to make dungeons bigger. Uh, and, you know, what, what do you think we could do? And I didn't want to work with Razor Fen because it was a pain in the ass. So I told <laughs> them that the canopy limited the size for the Razor Fen dungeons. And they... They bought that one because it was not a high-level dungeon. They didn't push for a larger dungeon, thank God. And we went with, uh, yeah, pushing all the Black Rock, Black Rock depths. Ended uh -huh. with Flame Lash was the uh, final boss in the. Uh, so the the Lyceum, the pour pour your own golem room, all of that stuff was not supposed to be uh that wasn't part of wow. lower black Rock's oh part. really okay yeah because it doesn't make sense that they that, that the throne room kind of and and i was out of ideas by by the time i got to the throne room right. i was just with brd with BRD. symmetrical rooms yeah brd yeah. backed up or black rock i i had the idea this we had just seen the lord of the rings and so uh <laughs> moria yeah. i was like oh dude i could do a total moria very broken rubbled out idea and then Kaplan and Pardo loved the idea so it was my idea and they both resisted it to actually join them because I could kind of double dip on lower black rock spire by just running a bridge and I get a this awesome view finally in upper black yeah. rock spire something dramatic in that dungeon because yeah. it's a very bland dungeon the, like I couldn't build any precipices mm. and that's by the time I'd built Lower Black Rock Spire, we realized, oh, a player who disconnects doesn't keep running because that was what we were worried about. We were worried about a person who disconnects 
continues to run and runs off the ledge, falls in the lava, dies, and now it's a negative experience. Well, luckily, players don't actually do that. And just do it on their own. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, yeah, they do it on their own. That and certainly was, never happened to me. Uh... And, and Jeff was on the team, and he would say, well, if they're, they're going to be a dumbass and jump off themselves, then screw them. Let them die. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> that was like uh, early on in the project, uh, all the designers were like, oh, we can't let them die like that. That's a, that's we can't, you know. But we had softened, you know, to, to to accommodate a little bit, a little of bit of free will. Patience. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit of free will. Take the players off that nice rail um, and uh, let them run free and kill themselves if they so choose. But so uh, I, I, I put the dungeons next to each other, and they are literally part of the same instance. You can uh -huh. do Upper Black Rock if you could survive the fall somehow. Uh, a mage could. But we yeah. were worried about some exploit of linking two dungeons together, and we couldn't think of an exploit that players could cheese the system, so we left it that way. So that's kind of how those two got connected. Did you guys? Did you have any like uh, with with the people who who designed the, the the different mobs and the bosses and stuff? How much did you work with them directly within UBRS? Um, I usually not a lot uh, for vanilla. Wow. We didn't, we didn't do a lot of planning and I think it, it, it was a, I like it that way. Uh, -huh. uh I don't like the big round room where you're going to have a fight there. Right. The round rooms are kind of boring and they're bland and the fights I think aren't always the best fights when, when, when you're forced to, use the geometry that's there your your mind you know you when you can't do anything at all you know, like like if you have a big round room then you got a blank piece of paper anything can happen in that boss fight yeah. and i think it's actually limiting in, in, in the mind doesn't work like when you're when there's a pit of fire in the center your, your mind oh how can that be incorporated into the fight okay uh, we did that with uh, Major Domo, uh, Executus. Uh, I had this. One of the few features <laughs> of the Molten Core was I put a, a coal, like a, yeah. a pit of coal. And then, oh, yeah, we can use this as, uh, you know, you teleport players there and they have to run off there. You know, that's just a one little game mechanic. It's very easy to do. But when you have a big blank room, stuff like that, it, it just doesn't happen. So. Yeah there's not a lot of connection uh between the level designers and the other than the the scripters would come by and say oh this room is so cool wait till you see what i did with this room you know that's yeah, how so, they that's how they would do things so you would make the room and then you would pass it off to the boss design to the boss designers and they would have to design the fight around the yeah. brain you gave them yeah and often like okay. when when you say pass it off i would finish it it would sit there for two years and then I would realize, oh, someone's working on X Dungeon X. Right. Oh, cool. You know, that's. <laughs> so, that's oh my God. That's, it's, yeah. it's so funny that you say this because you know, while while the original intention may have not been to, you know, we can't let them die like that. Talking about the bridge and UBRS. Yeah. Yeah. Some just sadistic person decided to make the mobs the the dragon can be able to punt you oh yeah they can yeah. charge and punt you and i don't know how many <laughs> yeah. times i've had my back facing the wrong way and gotten dropped into lbrs <laughs> thankfully i played a paladin so i could bubble but then i would just die to mobs anyway so i'd be screwed <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know what they also put those those stupid elite mobs outside with the slow poison when you're oh. trying to run into BWL. yeah like yeah. that was i was out at hams he he thought the elite mobs out in front of dungeons that was his <laughs> he was the only person like sometimes when the guy who founds the company has an idea nobody really has the wherewithal to say alan this is a really awful thing nobody likes this this is so I think they just wanted to just be extra mean and put a slow when you're trying <laughs> yeah. to run past them up into oh, the instance. Uh, so, so was yeah. was your guys' original intention for to to get into Black Rock Spire? Was your guys' original intention to to run up the staircase in the back, or was it to to yeah. jump on the chain? No, the jumping. Oh, oh, the uh, upper Black Rock Spire. Yeah, because basically to go to Black uh, Upper Black Rock or I guess Black Rock Spire in general. The statue, you mean? There's like, like a statue the, and then a chain, yeah, and then the you balcony. can. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, that was. 
by luck and one because nobody liked the elite mobs jeff asked hey can you make this an easier jump so everybody can make it right. we don't have to run by those stupid elite mobs this way <laughs> which you know i i put this whole barricade like a whole bunch of arrows where like like those stairs like where the elite mobs were mm -hmm. i had it looking like there was a last stand yeah yeah the dwarves and and nobody you know i guess you see it once or twice but yeah, I made it easier for the Torin to jump onto the balcony just because the devs just didn't want to have that argue, you know, that discussion with Alan. <laughs> Get rid of these elite mobs. They suck, you know. So <laughs> uh yeah, that was the band-aid that we put on. That was that uh that jump to the balcony. Did you design the the layout in in Black Rock Mountain like with the whole the chains leading into the middle uh that little rock piece in the middle? Yes and no. Metzen's vision was the, the, the uh, I call it an island, being held by chains, okay? Mm -hmm. um, other guys wanted giant statues of dwarves, and I kind of, I'm not crazy on the valley. I, I, I don't like the Valley of Heroes so much. I don't like, I don't like how you can t change the player model into a statue, because the statue doesn't look like a statue it's not thick like a, a statue it's just too detailed and i resisted that and then i decided well i'm going to incorporate the chains into a statue okay so yes okay so let's do a statue and then there was originally going to be two concentric rings around one uh one layer was going to be upper black rock spire and one layer was going to be uh, Black Rock Depths. Okay, that was the original plan. I didn't like the two concentric rings. It just didn't make sense. Why? Why would? Why would I want to have two rings? You know, let's just do one ring. Um, and I didn't like the idea of a bridge. If we have chains going across, that I got rid of the bridge, and put the chains. Used the the chains as a bridge. Made them pathable, and I had to get that's i had to get the game designers to tell the art director it's okay players will get it you know the art director was worried that people wouldn't be able to realize oh i can go through, across on the chains uh he just doesn't know how mm he was an mm he was not an mmo player so we had to have that discussion of us convincing the art director <laughs> to get rid of the bridge because it's way more cool without yeah, the dude. bridge. It's way yeah. more cool yeah. because it feels like you're sneaking into an area that you don't belong. That's yeah. the whole hit. And thank God, thank God they were there for me. So uh, seriously, the chains are like the most iconic part of a Black Rock Mountain. For yeah, us. yeah, so cool, yeah. yeah. And, the using the, and using the chains. A lot yeah. of people didn't think we could do chains because they were going to be too high poly, but they, I, I was able to figure out how to do chains and uh, do them low poly. I mean, they mm -hmm. were boxes. Right. <laughs> yeah. What about the, um, so, so the jump, whenever you come in from the north side, from Thorium Point area. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whenever you come from the north side, you can jump down and, and basically be right at Molten Core. Yeah. Was that intended yeah. or was that an accident? Uh, you know what? It's kind of funny. Well, one of the level di designers, here's a funny thing, they wanted to flatten out the two zones mm -hmm. so that the ring would actually be level. And I said, no way. It's way cooler when it's on a tilt. It yeah. just built up the space more. And that the northern entrance was originally uh Fuhrer, this is uh in an article coming out uh so spoiler alert i'm gonna have an article on my head about all my dungeons Fuhrer, this is the last days of the alpha before it went gold okay we're on we were on art lockdown and that basically means don't make any art changes <laughs> that are not approved by the producers okay because they're the ones responsible for it Fuhrer comes in and says, we need an art change. Okay, it's like midnight. Okay, I'm working. He's raiding with uh, Fires of Heaven in the Molten Core. He has this crazy look in his eyes and says, dude, I'm a torrent. And every time I run down the chains, when I get to the end of the chain, that big ring at the end, uh, there used to be collision that was wider 
than the width of the chain. Right. So uh... he's running down as a ghost. Okay. He forgets about that extra lip and it bumps him into the lava. Okay. okay. Now, this is a hardcore raiding guild after a wipe, uh-huh. after many wipes. And every time that's that super long run all the way down to uh, the, the molten core entrance, he forgets by that time because he's just on autopilot. Right. He's tired. He's triggered. exhausted. Yeah. And he falls down over and over and <laughs> over and he's the raid leader okay uh, mm-hmm. and he's the only he was like one of the only torn so uh he was the one prone because they had a larger uh collision box the torn did so he was the only one doing it okay mm-hmm. so he's looking like a dumbass in front of this raid <laughs> that's wiping it's midnight he's tired we're all fatigued we're, we're crunching on the project and he comes up with this crazy going Dude, okay. All right. I love you, but this ring is driving me crazy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, you just got to change it. You just got to change it. Okay. And I thought it was so funny uh, that, you know, so I made it so that you could f- climb out of the lava and get into the instant. Oh, prior to that, you couldn't even climb oh, out. So, yeah. No. Okay. He had to release to oh. the graveyard, take a huge hit on his, his armor. Okay, uh-huh. and you couldn't repair until you go to Cargath. Okay, yeah. so oh him falling Jesus. into that pit over and over and over was that painful <laughs> that I just ninjaed the art change in. He said, "Yeah, look, if you get in trouble, you can blame me. You know, just, <laughs> this, this can be just between you and I. No one needs to change it. And it's pretty dangerous, actually, to change because you can uh, when you do anything, you can yeah. introduce a bug." And we went gold, and that was like one of the last star changes in the game before it went gold. But yeah, yeah, that's getting out of the lava was, you can thank uh, Alex Afrasabi. There you go, uh, dude. Getting uh, Persians are great negotiators. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, I, I personally have had so much fun there as a paladin. I sit on the bottom of that lip. And Horde jumped down, and I would stun them in the lava and just, like, sit there and watch them burn to death. It's, like, one of my favorite things to do. I love it so much. Yeah. 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 There you go. There you go. Wow. So, um, <clears throat> pretty soon here, guys, we're going to uh, we're, we're gonna move to Q&A here shortly. Uh, do, you, do you guys have anything else that, that you guys want to hit on tips? Stay safe. I do. I have sort of a Classic WoW-related question. One sure. of the biggest topics I see about Classic WoW is the possibility of post Naxxramas or even just additional mid-tier content in Classic WoW, additional right. content that they could make. Right. So I think there's no better guy to ask than you. How feasible do you think that is? Do you think that's something that they would do or should do? What do you think about that? Oh, I first of all, I don't know about the no better guy to ask. I mean, I have, <laughs> it's been oh, seven years since I've been in computer game development, well, wait, at least with Blizzard. Uh, so I'm far away from the, the, the standards and practices, but, uh, uh, geez, I, I, I think an MMO has to sustain an audience for Mm -hmm. a long time to support its own financial weight. Uh, I don't know how many times we're going to kill Anixia and, uh, uh, geez, uh, Ragnaros Mm -hmm. over and over and over. I mean, you gotta be able to move on after, six months a year two years of killing those same two like what are the raiders going to do like how many times they're going to restart a new character and go after ragnaros go after anixia i i would argue they they have to their hand is forced but they may have plans of bringing up additional content or I, i i don't know what what it could possibly be but I think that they could. I mean, that's that's. I mean, it's something. I mean, is that is that what you're going for? Or I, I, um, I'm personally not for it. In my mind, okay. that additional content is TBC. I would just rather have them sure. do a classic TBC. Um, I'm also right. curious when they announced classic, were you shocked or did you know in advance? What was your reaction to that? Oh, I definitely didn't know it. I'm way out of the loop. Uh, I was pretty shocked. I know how hard it is to shoot. Uh, to, to ship a WMO. I mean, honestly, I think anybody reading my book to the beginning to the end, by the time of 
by the time you get to the end, you're fatigued as a reader. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. you are fatigued. You're going, oh, my God, one of these guys just going to ship this game already. Oh, my God, this is so <laughs> awful. Everybody's so depressed. This is it's a hard, hard game to make. And it's just all I I was I kept the minutia and the details in there. It's it's a hard thing to make an MMO. And if you're going to do it, it's it's you gotta you gotta hold the audience to to, to support it. So um, it's I, I just can't I, I I wish there were another way to say it. It's it's hard to make any MMO, even if they depart from uh, vanilla WoW or they they change some of the systems. Um, yeah, it, it, does that answer your question? I th I don't think I did. Uh, I, I'm satisfied. But sort of speaking of mm -hmm. the difficulty of making an MMO, um, maybe there's some in the audience. Do you have any advice for getting into game development, like as someone that's done it yourself? Uh, oh, definitely do. Oh, I definitely do. I mean, part of the book was bridging the gap between Akron, Ohio, and Irvine, California. I mean, no one that I grew up with had any aspiration to like. For me, creativity was going into advertising. That was like, mm. I had to leave Ohio to go to New York City. And that was a, exotic to me. And it's so hard. Here's, here's one of the, the mysteries, uh, some of the, a myth about the gaming industry. It is so insanely hard to find a good developer. It's so hard to find someone who really wants to polish their work. And that is the... You, I can't repeat myself enough. It's it's about polishing. It's like why I spent so much time on the book rewriting it over and over and over. That is what is what sells. It's polishing a, mo a, a movie, polishing a book, polishing a picture, just being in love with the, the medium enough to push it as far as you possibly can by yourself. 90% of the people applying to jobs, especially the junior designers, junior artists, junior uh, programmers, they'll work on something, they'll get it done in quotations, Mark, and they'll want to work on something else. Okay. Those guys are a dime a dozen. Okay. Uh, that's, and it doesn't cut it for the gaming industry. It, it's, it, I thought it was really hard to break into the gaming industry, and it is. It actually is. But, once you adopt this mentality of just polishing it, we, we hired a level designer. Uh, Dana Jan had one level. That's all it takes. Don't do a portfolio with this and that and the other thing, okay? Don't show us all the things that you can do. If you can just paint rocks really, really well, you can work anywhere you want. Like uh, an artist, <laughs> like seriously, yeah. that, like yeah. uh, that, someone who just has rocks down they, ha they they've got a career ahead of them and obviously they're going to get tired of rocks but eventually they're going to have rocks and they'll be forced at some point to do particle effects and then they'll oh wow particle effects are kind of cool i didn't know that that was a, that was a thing then you'll polish pol particle effects and that'll just dovetail into another job but yeah a lot of people go into the the industry trying to do everything and that's just not the way to do it so uh, the gaming industry i will say is very accessible to the artist or the uh, i came from to the, the meticulous maybe yeah, uh, yeah. of meticulous but willing uh -huh. to redo your work over and over because that's what you're doing in the industry i mean if you don't want to do it on your your own if you're in school and you don't want to redo stuff over and over you know you're going into the wrong industry because you're going to redo stuff over and blizzards games are iterative they, mm -hmm. they self-publish their games and so that they can they they can push their deadlines back if they want that's their that's the number one big secret to blizzard is that they self-publish their games that's it they fund their own games and so they have the power to say this sucks we're not doing this game or they have the power to say this is more interesting than we thought let's take our game down this road which is what happened to quests quests we were boring you know we thought and then went, wow that's kind of interesting this is very compelling gameplay for the casual player wow wasn't going going to have we were going to have the the producers in their spare time make some quests that was our quest designers producers in their spare time that's how important we considered quests in the year 2000 and when we got to 
a playable build, we realized, oh, quests are actually very fertile. Let's expand the budget, hire a bunch of quest designers, and really put them into the, the fertile area of our MMO. And that's what made WoW successful is that we had the casual player quests. Right. That's yeah. one of the things that I, I thought was so good about Vanilla WoW that is, is very, very understated. Uh, a lot of people look back on Vanilla and, and talk about, oh, like, you know, it's a hardcore game. There's grinding. There's this and that. I remember at the time, well, first off, at the time, whenever WoW came out compared to other MMOs, it was considered, like, the easy game compared oh, to EverQuest. Or, oh, yeah, absolutely. it was the Care Bear game. Exactly. That's yeah. what I called it. Yeah, we, we, we heard that a lot. Yeah. So there's that. And then second off, I, I do remember that, and, and this is like a big difference between the game today and Vanilla WoW. And I was actually talking about this on stream yesterday, but the game was so much, uh, it was much more casual friendly in the sense that throughout the entire course of the game, you were, you were experiencing the journey, right? Like you were, you were going through and it's, you know, it's the world of Warcraft. It's not just about end game rating. It's not just about high end PVP. And, right. you know, it's, it's, you, you feel like you're, you're a character, you know, you're in Stormwind, you're coming out of Northshire Abbey, or not, uh, in Elwyn, coming out of Northshire Abbey, you're a human, let's say. I mean, you're, you're, you're this little tiny, like, peasant, basically, and you're, you're building your character up, and you're right. still not, like, you know, at the end, like, you can become very powerful, but you're still, like, you know, nothing compared to these bosses, and you need 39 other people to, to join together to take them down, and, like, it's, it's this yeah. whole journey that you feel, um, and it's, like, a series of small wins, like, the little progressions, putting in one talent point every level, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and, and that was just because it took so... The, the, the reason why talents exist at all is because the level up experience was underwhelming for a lot of people when they were out in the field killing uh, -huh. uh kobolds or something uh they would level up they'd get their health and mana back uh -huh. and they'd say oh great when i get back to iron forge i'll be able to train in my new spells uh -huh. and then i will be stronger there's no moment of ooh. there's no little thing that we wanted yeah, the little small win. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, like you level up in Dungeons and Dragons, and it's like you, you hear a chorus, "Hallelujah!" You know, <laughs> it's uh, and uh, in, in WoW, it was just like, eh, "All right, so I'm a different level," and it was kind of a pain in the ass because you were in the middle of a quest, and you kind of felt stupid not having your you, right. You wanted to find out what your spells were. So it was just kind of this bitter taste in your mouth, like, well, shit, this sucks. I mean, this is uh, uh, our uh, our level <laughs> level up experience really isn't all that awesome. And uh, well, even even the fact that yeah, well, yeah, that's a that's a different thing. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah the it, go ahead, go ahead. Thing. Well, I was just gonna say, like, kind of piggybacking on that, like, you know, over time, like you mentioned the Care Bear thing and stuff. Um, but I guess everything is relative, right? Like, you know, World of Warcraft, vanilla relative to, to its predecessors versus rel relative to its, I guess, sequels and its, you know, right. its progeny after it. Um, yeah. I, I got a question, uh, you know, specifically towards that. You designed Blackrock Dungeons, John, and we, when we were talking about it earlier, I'm not sure if you noticed the chat. There's a lot of love in the chat uh, for BRD. Mm -hmm. It's, it's <laughs> you know, I think it's a masterpiece, honestly. A lot of people. John's really pushing BRD. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it is one of the best dungeon experiences I think WoW has ever had, you know, the past 15 yeah. years. And um, over time, it, it's almost become the antithesis of, of the dungeon design we see today. It's, it's a lot more sprawling, larger, 15 plus bosses. Um, it, it's kind of like a big dungeon crawl. Things right. have obviously changed since then. How do you feel about some of the more streamlined dungeons that, that came out, like in Cataclysm, even Wrath of the Lich King? You know, was that was that yeah. something you were for against? You know, the more condensed action dungeons. Uh, I, I wasn't obviously. I, I I don't play the game now. I don't know how streamlined dungeons. I loved Dungeon Finder. I had such a hard time. All of us had a hard time finding a group for for doing dungeons. I don't think anybody misses that inconvenience um maybe i'm wrong out there maybe there's a lot of hate but yeah i i, I loved it personally stones. oh yeah you like I, the I, I, stones? I, I, <laughs> well, it definitely, it definitely forced you to interact <laughs> with yeah i know because because the thing is i i loved it because uh, you know, for me, it's trade chat, right? Just having yeah, an active you're, you're trade chat. You're melting your chat log right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not agreeing with you. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. I, the thing is, I, I loved it because you, 
<laughs> they gave you an opportunity to interact and it gave your your server character it gave your server identity sure right it did. Yeah. so like basically like i i know like i would know of people on the server through just talking oh, in trade absolutely. chat right absolutely. and that kind of progressed to like oh like you know so and so is looking for a group i want to join his group and then conversely it kind of it, it put a little bit of accountability to your name and if somebody sucked or like was a ninja looter or something like that then it's like oh it's that guy i don't want to deal with that guy yeah you know no yeah. you're, you you're totally right about that. I mean, in fact, that's why we didn't want an auction house. Uh, oh. Auction house was forced on us. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a player add-on that actually it obeyed the end user uh, licensing agreement, but you needed to have that add-on to be part of the really cool economy where you could actually move merchandise we wanted that player to player that inconvenient player to player interaction of mm -hmm. some poor slob making i don't know the pearl staff of what's it, you know who's it what's it and standing in the marketplace spamming over and over and over the pearl hat you know the pearl staff of so and so is mm -hmm. is now you know available for 34 gold the Pearl Staff of so-and-so is now available for 34 gold. You know, mm -hmm. that is gone with the auction house. And that type of person-to-person -person interaction, auction house completely. Um, so, yeah, some people like some conveniences. And where is that line? Uh, yeah. it's, it's always – and what's hard about an MMO is that it's everything to everyone. You've got hardcore gamers and – you have casual gamers, okay? But you can't support an MMO on the uh, on the money you make from hardcore gamers, mm -hmm. okay? There's not enough. You need the casual gamers to justify, you know, they're going to keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you got to have some conveniences and you, you, you got to... But the downtime is what makes it, makes it... That's when people chat, you know? That's, that's when the guildies get together. When you're, when you're on a long... Uh, taxi ride. That's when you're chatting to your guild, and that's adding content to the and flavor to the game. That's right. uh, exactly. that's where the social interaction happens. Right. So, I, I can't I can't think of a game other than Vanilla WoW that is incentivized, encouraged, fostered community involvement and engagement with other players and teamwork cooperation. I can't think of any other game that does it better than Vanilla WoW. Well, yeah, th 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 there's certainly other games that um, do it. Um, we've minimized. What we're good at is minimizing the griefing. That's actually where the, uh, the that's that's a successful game. If you could prevent people from uh, consensual PvP was a new idea. We had no idea that that could be, wow, that's that's actually a thing. You know, uh, Anarchy Online showed it, that we could do that. Uh, Dark Age of Camelot, you go into mm -hmm. the frontier, you're, consens you're consenting to, you know, do PvP. And it's that those were ideas that we thought would never like we didn't have those concepts so we weren't planning for any d we were considering no pvp whatsoever like literally all the top designers in the company at one point said now we're, we're probably not going to do pvp there's no way we can prevent people from griefing one another Really? So, okay. Oh, absolutely. And then when uh, Anarchy Online came out and Dark Age of Camelot came out, like, oh, oh, wow. PvP can actually be really, really fun. Yeah. Um, I was one of the, 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 the vocalists for PvP because I came from the first person shooter community. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, if you connect to this server, you know, your ass is mine. <laughs> so that's that was the mentality for me. So. Uh, obviously, I was more the hardcore uh, uh, advocate, but uh, yeah. So a lot of it's it's a constantly changing paradigm. Constantly, someone's going to come up with something, where they're they're going to draw something from Fortnite or something that has some implication on World of Warcraft, and that's going to be the next thing, you know. Mm hmm. Um, <clears throat> so one thing that we, uh, one thing that we haven't talked about yet, uh, and, and we, we talked about this just, just briefly, uh, before, before the podcast and, uh, 
it was talking about basically like when when we think WoW Classic is going to come out. You know, look into the future a little right. bit. And now, right. now you you haven't been with the company for a while. You know, you you mentioned that, but um, you uh, I guess you mentioned before that you thought it it, it could possibly like you know be be it, it might not come out until like 2021 even is is what you were thinking. That was my prediction, uh, uh, but. I am way out of the know. I like right. you guys were know more than me. Um, yeah. uh, you, you, you follow the, the recent developments. Right. So I'm, I'm completely benighted. I have right. no idea. Uh, yeah. Well, cause I, I do know only one thing, how hard it is, how hard it is to make an MMO and right. how hard to balance it. And this is not an uncritical audience. So <laughs> they're not going to release something that is not going to measure up to players' right. expectations. Yeah. So, and I know Blizzard's, you know, uh, finicky <laughs> adherence to quality. So they're not going to release anything that's that's not going to be good. So. Right. And and one thing that uh so and I was talking about this because it came up on my stream. The reason why I bring this up is it came up on my stream a little bit. And because uh, a few people asked about it, because because they had heard you had said that, um, I, with the recent like Dev Water Cooler update that came out like a couple months ago, uh, it seemed like you know they're they're already like on their their you know third at least you know this was this was two months ago they're they're working towards their like third prototype of the of the game, and that's why like I still kind of like I, I still believe that there could potentially be uh, an alpha or beta or some sort of testing period this year. You know, and we've talked about that before. Uh, you know, certainly we're hopeful for that. You know. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> usually, okay. So I, I have this funny section called "Fake It Till You Make It." Mm -hmm. Okay. Usually, computer game companies follow this tra trajectory, where they'll release screenshots and movies and uh, gameplay trailers. And there's this, and what, depending on what content is released or discussed, it's a strong indication of how long it will be until that product comes out. Okay, now that, that, that section was, there's a whole bunch of MMOs making crazy, crazy, uh, uh, claims of what they're MMO. You can play dragons. There's 30 some classes, or it's an infinitely explorable world, or just you know infinite content. Uh, so, yeah, until you're showing things or talking about things, you know, unless they're actually talking about features, mm -hmm. boy, you know, I I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, also I'm like I I'm stuck in the you know what whatever decade. I'm not a Blizzard guy anymore. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not. I'm not a. I, I don't know most of the devs who are being interviewed now. Like they've, you know, my guys have moved on to other projects, other things. So, uh, you know, there's a whole different method, whole different uh, uh, philosophy, and it's probably born on a lot more experience and data with MMOs than what we had when we were making them. So. I, I can only judge it by my old eyes. If they're not talking about it, like specifically talking about features that mm -hmm. they're confident, then they're probably not confident about which features are going to be in the in, in the game. Or right. uh, if they're ta not showing screenshots of what raids are going to be in the game, then they're probably not close to nailing down which raids are going to be in the game. You know, usually. Uh, so I don't right. think it's going to. I, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns and saying after uh, 2020. Yeah, I think I think specifically. So so in the water cooler update, I just pulled it up too, uh, you know, just for reference. Maybe they have actually. I could well, use this egg on my face. Oh, wait, here's the features that we're having. Here's the you know. Rain that we're well, having. well, they they, they <laughs> do break it down pretty well. They talk about okay. how like. Uh, okay. You know, they don't, they don't actually show screenshots and stuff, but basically they talk about, like, uh, table data, file data, LUA scripts, and, and basically how stuff has changed. You know, talking about how, like, the, the, right. they're going through and basically reworking uh, how the whole spell system 
the, they're they're making the spell system match the current retail version of the spell system in terms of okay. the back end that players won't that see. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so they're going through and basically like modernizing the stuff under the hood. And uh, there's, you know, I, I'm pretty big on, you know, not really changing anything. You know, no changes, of course. But, uh, <laughs> but, but. Or are you going to be disappointed? <laughs> well, well, I think, I think under the hood, yeah, I think, I think under the hood, that's stuff to expect, right? Like the engineering side of it. Well, I mean, right? do you remember how unbalanced some of the classes were? How useless, like some classes were in raids or how, like, like it's. it's I played like, a Rep Paladin. So okay. I, I think that was good. Uh, okay, so yeah. you know, you played that type of paladin. Okay, so uh -huh. but I mean, there are other like some rogues, no, you know, uh, druids. Like I mean, Boomkin wasn't. Do we get rid of Boomkins? Right. Well, I, we I think. Get, what about the tree? The tree is gone. You know. Right. I mean, that wasn't in WoW. I mean, people do forget <laughs> how limited those classes were yeah. and. I, I think I'm, I'm I'm excited to see what they come up with. I really am. But uh, yeah. I think a lot of people that are that are classic fans, uh, you know, like myself in particular, like I, I rated I, I've I've completed the entire like I've done all the raid content as a rep paladin. Right. And it's like it, yeah. it, it definitely falls off and doesn't uh, it, it doesn't perform, you know, you know, to the same standards like a fury warrior, for example, right. a fury yeah. warrior or like right. a, a combat rogue. Um, but I think what people learned over the years, you know, uh, later on after the fact, maybe, um, they, they found out, like, different ways to really optimize their class uh, in ways that weren't necessarily the same. Like, you know, weren't necessarily uh, service level, right? You know, whether, whether it is, like, playing a Boomkin or playing a Rep Paladin and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know. I, I, sorry, go ahead. I was say, or, or maybe you provide a value to the raid or your group that isn't just sheer DPS, right? right. Uh, there's, every, every spec is very, very unique. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think there's a lot of people who who do enjoy that. Um, as come, I mean, I play a rep panel, like I said. I know, like I know, I, I don't do as much damage as, as as a fury or something. But uh, you know, it's it it's fine in its own right, right? You know, there's there's 40 people in the raid, so it's not. Did you, uh, did you raid in vanilla? I did. Yeah. Okay. Because I I, I I recall um, some classes just not being able to, like. If you're raiding, it's it's usually like a min max type of thing. Like uh, the raid is about as, if it's a challenging raid, you know, there's there's some specs out there that you're not invited. You know, right. when, when we've got we first of all, you have a roster of forty people now. Right, <laughs> right. So uh, there is so the guilds are probably going to be bigger. Uh, it, oh man, I I I am really curious. Probably more so than even you guys are just knowing all of the ins and outs of the back end decisions and how things are I, I i'm really curious to see what they do so are you going to be personally playing classic wow i don't play computer games anymore oh, okay. okay i have a thing with my hands uh a neurological thing that uh that's why i'm moving to tabletop i feel uh, you okay yeah so don't play don't can't make them so yeah i i got a quick question john about like the changes no changes thing not so much from the feature mm -hmm. side but uh, we talked about this a little bit before we started the podcast. Blizzard has decided to take the, the current client, instead of like taking the old vanilla code and adjusting it to modern hardware, they're kind of going the opposite route, where they're taking the modern client and stripping it away until the game is basically vanilla again. Um, and that's kind of their plan for classic. Right. From a developer standpoint, do you see like any possibly unintended changes happening or any inevitable changes just because of that methodology? Like, are, are you know, are graphics going to naturally be better or, you know, like, are there things that are going to change because they're decided to go through that route? I, I, I boy, gosh, I, I, I don't know. This is mm -hmm. again, fascinating for a different reason. Mm -hmm. um, just when I said, boy, boy, you're going to be disappointed. Developers are by definition, creative people. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to want to do things differently. Creativity is the act of uh, killing the status quo. Going back, working on a game that's following in somebody's footsteps is going to be less enjoyable by a huge margin to, for, I think, for every programmer, designer, and artist. Uh, even if uh, maybe they won't be, maybe they don't have an art set. Maybe they'll just use all the old art uh, assets, but I, I don't know. 
I don't know you wouldn't, how you wouldn't want to do how, it. How they would do it? I, I certainly would not do it. No, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I mean, I'm I'm mm -hmm. a creative person. Um, yeah, I would. I would probably go to another company and work on my own thing. Like that's why it's so hard to. We're talking about how hard it is to get old Blizzard devs into uh, discussions. They've moved on. You fall in love. Like even as a level designer, once you've built something, you forgot about it. You don't care. Like if people are having uh, a lot of fun or not a lot of fun, you don't care anymore because you're so focused on the new thing that you're working on, you, you lose yourself in it. And it, it, it's, that's the joy of making something. That's why we make games. That's why we write books and movies. Uh, it, it, yeah, so to have that type of person, have a team of that type of person working on something that has to, it's, I would imagine, like your example, starting with today's code and working back to, mm -hmm. I guess, yesterday's uh, art or data. Yeah, that, that's basically um, what it looks like they're wanting to do sounds, with the third prototype. That sounds painful to me. That sounds <laughs> that, 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 like you're gonna you're you're going to say, Oh, wait a minute, we're getting rid of this system, like uh we're going back to the meeting stones, like the, the really, is that what we're doing? Like this dungeon finder. Because the dungeon finder was actually a big deal because when you when you have cross server people playing in the same dungeon it's a, it's a fundamentally different architecture joe uh rumsey had to ask which way do we want to write server back end back end back end we can do it so each realm is its own realm or are there going to be some similarities where players from different realms can play together we said oh let's do the fir first one the first one's that that's definitely how we want to do it okay then the dungeon finder came said well we have to draw from a large enough audience of people who want to play uh the dead mines well we have to draw from lots of realms so now we have to rewrite everything and do it that way so that's kind of how we got the cross realm mixes is, is rewriting the back end and that took uh well i think longer than a year to do i mean really? that's a ton of work ton of server uh changes so do we stick with that or do we stick with the former one? And again, have to <laughs> have to reach a point in some time in the future, say classic wow ships, everything's fine for a couple of year, every couple of years and everyone's like, okay, classic wow is good, but I want to find a group for the dungeon. We need this, this cross realm mm -hmm. population, pollination, cross pollination. Uh, Oh my gosh! All these decisions. I, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. It's 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 it sounds. It's to me, to my ears, it sounds way harder than is commonly known. And it's funny. I think that's part of the reason why it took so long to kind of to do it to, to announce Classic. Uh, it's funny. Like a lot of us, right? Like a lot of us are gamers. I'm not. I'm not in software development. I don't think Stay Safe S Fend are either. And yeah. like a lot of the people out there, we we just want Classic. You know what I mean? It's a game we <laughs> yeah. love. Yeah. But yeah. then when you hear about the challenges and the technical challenges behind the scenes, it starts to make sense why it took Blizzard so long, you know, in the face of what seemed to be like overwhelming popularity. It took them so long to actually come out and say, OK, we're going to do this because it, it like you said, it, creative people don't want to work on it. And that's a technical challenge. You know? Yeah. And, and how do you look? Everyone likes money. But after a while, you you don't you forget how much money you're making and it, you, you begin to hate the job that you work on. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't want that employer, but I just don't know. You know, I, I've come in from the entertainment industry. Nobody is that employee. Uh, nobody wants to just, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is just one person's, you know, uh, theory. That's just, you know, crackpot. Maybe I'm talking too much about John stats, you know, and how John stats wants to work. Maybe it's fine with other people, but uh yeah i mean honestly i could say this i mean it's kind of silly to keep bringing up my, my book that i'm obviously showing it's <laughs> <laughs> when you when you no read how hard this yeah. book like this book shows you the pain it is really a hard thing to do to make an mmo uh to make any computer game grant i'd love to read the book uh, of uh uh, Fortnite or Grand Theft Auto. I, I, this this book could have been written about any game. Uh, mm -hmm. Just the, the development process is, is interesting. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm surprised they announced. I'm surprised they made the announcement. I was really shocked when they actually said, OK, we're going to commit to this. Usually Blizzard will 
only make that announcement when they're absolutely certain they can do it. And as much as I don't see how they could have done it, the fact that they announced it leads me to believe, oh, they can actually do it. So. That, oh, somebody just dropped call. I must. Is, is something I said. Oh, yeah. tip tips accidentally. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah, you're good. You dropped call for a second. What happened? There you, okay. there you go. My bad. Sorry about dude, that. Monkey ass, dude. <laughs> but yeah um no and, and and just to kind of take like one line uh out of the uh the water cooler update kind of what they what they say they want to do um they say starting from modern architecture with all its security and stability changes it means the team's efforts can be focused on pursuing an authentic classic experience any differences in behavior between our development builds and patch 1.12 reference can be systematically cataloged and corrected while still operating under a foundation that's stable and secure. So that's kind of why I, I, I think that uh, there's there's oh, probably going to be oh. under the hood type that's of changes, like changing yeah. the, the spell system and stuff, uh, yeah. where it's like something the players won't notice, but um, but in terms of like, oh, okay, it's, it's going to be uh, you know in, in the same vein of classic, like people aren't really going to notice any under the hood type stuff. Um, right. So that's that's what I'm really hoping for, and that's, that's what a lot of people uh, I think are, are really hoping to see as well. Was is that patch? Um, was aggro still a thing? Like the threat, mm -hmm. the threat meter. Yep. Is yeah. That, okay. Big thing. Yeah. I liked that. I I, I really liked that. I yeah. thought that was a cool mechanic. Uh, it was so complicated, players couldn't figure it out. And I think that's a great <laughs> thing. I think yeah. that's a great thing. Yeah. Um. But no, cool. Uh. Well, who knows? Maybe they're not. Uh. uh well. Yeah. It's. It's it's kind of funny. We'll wait and see, and then when it releases, we'll have to wait and see what the response is in both the short run and the long run. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I could be. Hopefully, I'm wrong. Hopefully, I'm totally. Oh, look, guys, I hope I'm so completely wrong about that. I, that would be so awesome if they could just uh, just slip the new code into the old art assets, and you know, away you go. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'd like that. I think we'd all like that. Get it as soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, from what yeah. I from what I took from everything you just said, John, it, just God bless the classic wild devs. Is that is that what I'm understanding here? Basically. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, they're yeah. taking a hit for you. Yeah. Oh, believe me, those guys. There's, those guys are champions. Let's let's salute them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> so. I, I, you know, we've been we've been going for some time now, uh, and and people are I think people are getting a little bit anxious. Uh, we we got some questions coming in on Twitter, uh, guys. If you guys want to go ahead and, and send us some questions on Twitter, uh, those of you guys watching, uh, S Fan TV tips out baby and stay safe warlock. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and follow us, tweet at us, uh, hashtag Classicast, and uh, we can start going to some of those questions. We've already got a few coming in. Uh, we'll also take some questions from the chat as well. Uh, also. Uh, you know, if you guys could please give uh, tips out, baby, and, and stay safe TV a follow uh, as well on Twitch. We all we all do stream on Twitch. We all have YouTube channels, uh, all the same same name: YouTube.com/sfantv. Tips out, baby, and stay safe TV. Uh, one question, and, and this was asked earlier, uh, you know, a little bit in the chat, and it was tweeted at us too, is from uh, Diamond Wolf 15. This is a really good question for you, John. Uh, <laughs> what is the smiley face under Karazhan for? So oh, uh, just yeah. kind of expand on that. Like, you, oh, do you guys totally. just do funny stuff like that? Like, you know, just because you yeah. get bored? Well, actually, no. The layouts, the way the zone is done, um, because you're working on a zone from the perspective of the god view, okay? Your, your, your perspective is you're high above the zone. You kind of lose a sense of perspective. Uh, you don't realize how far away the camera is. And that means you don't, you forget how big the zone is okay so you'll mm -hmm. have to spray paint these words and uh, boxes and circles to give you a, a sense of how big things are so that that circle was the footprint of Karazhan and that was Matt Sanders who was working in uh, Deadwind Pass he was just telling himself look this is where Karazhan's gonna go I can safely work on the areas outside that circle and I can polish it with a fair amount of certainty that John isn't going to be a jerk and expand the footprint of his dungeon just because he thinks he's working alone and other people <laughs> aren't working on stuff around him. Okay? Right. So 
Uh, so it's an accountability is, tool, basically. Yeah. Okay. There so you go. He'll, he'll put that there. Okay. So he can say, John, John, look, this is this is where the footprint is. You got to take that out of there. I've made this nice little area, and uh, the smiley face who probably just does just as a goof to himself. You know, it's it's not. Uh, nobody sees that area. Uh, other than him and the tens of thousands of people who have data mined the build. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Um, this is, uh, oh, just, I just scrolled up on accident. Uh, where'd you go? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll go ahead and hit another question uh, from Seth Franks. This is actually, we, we actually touched on this earlier, but just to clarify, uh, back in Vanilla in southern Warner Spring in the mountains, there was a green dungeon portal with a barred off gate in front of it. Uh, do you have any idea what that was? Was there supposed to be a dungeon behind it? It's very mysterious. So this actually, uh, we, we talked about this earlier when we were talking about Hygel, and, and you said a Hygel was essentially going to be like an exterior raid zone. Uh, yeah. That was kind of where the, the connection from Witherspring to Hygel was. Was that, was that where... Um... I actually don't know that because I've never played Hygel. Um, so the... Boy, that portal... It's where the under construction sign was. Yeah. In Southern Wonder Spring. If you, that's if that, probably you what it is. I can't say for sure. Certain. I can't. Mm -hmm. I wish I could. Yeah. Come. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, this was, this yeah. one's one for all of us, actually. This is one for all of us. Uh, thoughts on achievements in WoW Classic. And uh, I'll go ahead and start on this. Uh, I, I personally think achievements, you know, no changes, of course, but but for real, like, uh, I don't think it's as simple as saying no changes and, and not having a, a reasoning and explanation behind it. And uh, I, I actually was not a fan of achievements being put in the game. You know, today, it's kind of one of the, the main things that people play the game for. They like to get all their right. achievements and get their achievement points up. Right. But uh, I personally, like, I, I, I played WoW pretty heavily from vanilla to the end of Burning Crusade and the very start of Wrath of Lich King, and I and I quit because a lot of my friends quit, and I, I I just I didn't really like it. That was my my last expansion too, yeah. Right, so so I quit at the beginning of Wrath, and then uh, I I came back because you know I missed WoW, right? I think a lot of people who who grew up playing WoW, WoW is a very like big part of their life, and for yeah. me like I. I, I being a paladin, especially in vanilla, a rep paladin, uh, resonates with me like very personally, you know, and I, I miss the game. So I came back to it and, and I start playing WoW again and I can't get into a single group. I can't get into a single group because I don't have gear score. I don't have achievements. Like I'm trying to do a dungeon, link your achievement or raid, link your achievements for this raid. Well, I haven't done it. How am I supposed to have the achievement? So uh, it was one of those things that it basically, it was like a yeah, noob, yeah, I know. So, so I was like gated socially. <laughs> from doing a lot of the content, I ended up quitting again before Cataclysm came out. Um, yeah. So that, that was just one of the things for me that made me really, really dislike, uh, really, really dislike achievements. Yeah. Um, achievements achievements definitely influence player behavior. You know, in vanilla WoW, if you were trying to find a group for Zul'Gurub, you're gonna pug Zul'Gurub, you'd stand on the Ironforge bridge and there would be a raid leader saying, come poke me, I'm on the bridge, and he would inspect you, go poke him, you, you, he would inspect you, and he'd mm -hmm. say, sorry, your, your gear is too terrible, you're not invited. Or maybe if you're lucky enough, you had good enough gear, and then he would bring you to Zul'Gurub. And now right. yeah. it's just as simple as, okay, link me your ahead of the curve achievement, or link me your achievement, or what's your eye level, you know? Right. And so I, I think that that interaction, the actual genuine player-to-player -player sort of like virtually making eye contact almost, if that makes sense, Yeah. Um, that's great. And achievements sort of take away from that. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you in the sense that, well, it's not – nothing wrong with achievement achievements it's the fact that it's not just local the fact that you can it's the fact that you've turned achievements into a club it's mm -hmm. it's, it's a uh, it's yeah it's basically a it's a license license to do content with everyone who's done this content um yeah we we, we had that problem it was a s slight problem with inspecting uh gear but yeah I, yeah, don't know how to address it other than agree with you, then, yeah, it's not a problem with achievements. It's the fact that you are making them visible to yeah. other players and how it's being used, not realizing that it can be used that way. It's a, it's a form of griefing. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. uh, you know, allowing people, like, if, if that visibility was removed, then, you know, achievements are actually the easiest thing to do. 
developers love achievements. They actually don't take a lot of time. Um, they're very easy to uh, uh, create. You can create a ton of achievements. So <laughs> every game's going to have achievements. They're great. Yeah. My right. campaign has achievements. Yeah. So luckily, in in the recent uh, this like two or three months ago, where they had the water cooler talk, the blue post about Classic Wow, they actually said achievements specifically because they weren't in vanilla wow they will not be in classic so they've already ruled them out mm -hmm. so i'm not worried uh, about it at all uh, achievements weren't in vanilla wow no uh, no they were oh. added in wrath really oh mm -hmm. my goodness well, i'm misremembering okay wow it, is wow. there any feature john that you would like to see in in vanilla that was not in vanilla that came later is there anything where you're like, darn, I wish we had these in, in the days of vanilla? Oh, without a doubt, the Dungeon Finder. Without a yeah. doubt. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. It's, it's, there, there is a, everything's in degrees. Okay. It's either how hard or how easy some things are. Some things are too easy. Some things are made too hard. Finding a group for a dungeon, for me personally, the way I played in my guild, uh, it was just way too hard. Um, I'd also like to have some of those dungeons. Uh, despawned and <laughs> made <laughs> made easier, um, uh, but that's me. Um, like six hours to clear Scalamance is a little bit too long for me. That's me. Um, you mean like I, by despawn? You mean like less trash or what? Yeah, less trash. I yeah. Like, okay. Uh, actually, uh, the one point two is probably after we despawned all the dungeons. Yeah, when we it was really hardcore <laughs> in the uh, the alphas and the betas. Yeah. So, but uh, honestly, like that is a thing that leaps to mind as the thing that really needs to be. Uh, that was the worst feature, I think, in Vanilla WoW is the the meeting stones and well, that it didn't ship with the meeting stones. I think that 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 was added. Hoping yeah, that would be a band aid to the fact that people couldn't find one another. But who knows? Twitter didn't exist. Facebook. Who knows if people are finding dungeons through social media? Well, I Discord. Mean, Discord. Discord. Yeah, Discord's big. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. So maybe you don't need uh, the the dungeon finder. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think uh, a lot of the the classic fans feel that way, where uh, they they really like the old, just the old, good old wholesome go find your friends sort of playing the game, even if it took a little bit longer. Um, I think, uh, so we have a question here. Um, I like this one. This is from uh, Aries Official. Back in 2004, how far did you plan things to go and how much of it actually happened and what did you scrap? I guess that's, you know, it's very broad, but like how far ahead did you guys plan basically to condense that question down? Uh, not at all. Uh, like we had, we had ideas of things we could put in the game mm -hmm. and as we got closer and closer to the deadline say okay well that will leave out of the game we're nowhere the stuff that got most work that went into the game <laughs> okay uh yeah so uh geez planning uh yeah that that that's i think people think that we planned a lot more there's that when so many decisions were made because of content availability, because of uh, features uh, taking too long to write. That's what decided what got into the game. It wasn't some, yeah, there's no mountain, no tablets being brought down on the mountain. It's it's what you can get out the door. It's, it's an MMO. You'll be happy to have something out the door that doesn't completely stink, so. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think uh, we kind of we kind of touched on this too, I guess, a little bit earlier on, uh, where we were talking about like how Gilneas was on the map and how uh, you know some of these other places were on the map even though they weren't accessible, right? Where you so you guys would basically just like make stuff, yeah. throw it out there, and it's like figure something out to do with this. Uh, oh, actually, this reminds me of a question I had, uh, and I, I I totally forgot to ask this earlier. So, sure. and I, I just you know this is this is blaspheme. I I didn't get into WoW through Warcraft, like so many people did. So many people played sure. Warcraft 3. I played Warcraft 2, I didn't play Warcraft 3. Uh, I all didn't right. play Frozen Throne until recently. I went back and played through all of Warcraft 3. I'm going to play Frozen <laughs> Throne later, so don't worry. Uh -huh. I'm not, it's not untouched. That's all right. <laughs> but uh, I, I got into WoW through MMOs and Dark Age of Camelot. What I noticed, it was, cool. it was a very, 
it, it really stood out to me in Warcraft 3 was how different the map was, how different Azeroth was, the world map was in right. Warcraft 3 oh, uh, yeah. compared to WoW. So what, what were the reasons behind that? Was that just basically like from streamlining like the playability or? Uh, that is the influence of game design on lore. Uh-huh. Uh, you can only be so well lore has to be lore is always the first thing that changes uh 99 of the time okay uh, if you have a oh, a limitation with uh frame rate or uh convenience to players uh it's i would say probably the map is mo specifically the map is mostly influenced by the convenience of of going from zone to zone uh, hubs available hubs probably Kargath at least I was playing on the horde probably not the best hub in the world to actually mm -hmm. stage <laughs> all of your raids uh, from two raids <laughs> at least I don't know how many other uh, Blackrock raids there have been but that's probably not the best place to so uh, yeah it's it's honestly it's foresight like once the game designers get in they'll 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 point to lore and say well this is all high-end stuff over here why do you why would we have a newbie zone over you know right next to it it, it kind of separates the newbies yeah. away from their mid-level zone and so they so you have to massage things and that's and and also the flow of zone to zone a uh, color was actually one of the you know, wanted changes to the color palette. You know, you don't want to. Well, the problem with Kalimdor, it was like desert, desert. Oh, there's bones and death and gray in this zone. That's more desert. You know, so it, it's not <laughs> as uh, I, uh, tangible as the Azeroth, the, the, the Eastern Kingdoms were. Uh, where we get dwarves and you have Arathi Highlands and Silver, just these beautiful zones, uh, very iconic zones, uh, the, the haunted forest, you know, this uh, or the snowy mountain peaks is something that we all mm -hmm. identify with. Uh, I don't know how many people can identify with the, uh, uh, you know, the Sahara Desert Zone, you know, or the Silithus. So, like these are just a little bit, you know, dead. So. Basically, the color palette just defines how the player zone, and that changes the map. So um, that's kind of a plenty of answer on so that. So pretty much, if, it, if, if, <laughs> if rambling the answer is, on that one. If the lore is inconvenient, just retcon it and then change it. Oh, lore is very, re very regularly changed over and over. <laughs> it's 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 what changes the most, by far, by far, always changing mm -hmm. the most. If if we find out that oh we're sending players from this dungeon to that dungeon oh but that means we're going to be fighting the same type of monster in both dungeons do we really want to players fight the same monster in both dungeons and some you might be faced with mets and going oh, all right well we'll put all right we'll make one more humanoid like tribal they'll be slightly intelligent and put more beasts in the other one to vary it up then that's how they populate a dungeon you know it's a completely rewrite at the end when uh -huh. somebody realizes that oh yeah this is the flow this isn't good so you one know. thing i read i don't know if you know about this but in warcraft 2 and warcraft 3 uh with night elves only druids uh only men were druids only male night elves were druids <laughs> and so in wow mm -hmm. yeah. they're like well we can't just have men like okay oh, we gotta we gotta fun. open it up to women yeah yeah so you, yeah you, you switch it up yeah. that's yeah uh there, here's a question from sculpin 93 i'd love to hear uh -huh. this too john uh what was okay. your favorite zone uh angoro crater because dinosaurs oh. <laughs> nice <laughs> there you and go. honestly Simple. i like I like the jungle zones. I think everybody identifies with green. We're humans. We, we love green uh, zones. Uh, green is the color we see more shades of than any other color. Mm -hmm. uh, we are trained to be good at green. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm human. So I love Stranglethorn, Ungoro. Those were my favorite classic. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so this is a, uh, I'm, I'm going to add to this question cause I, I think it needs another question before he asks it, but this is from Reglaris. Um, 
he, he wanted to – well, I'll go ahead and ask my question first because it will it'll lead up to this. Uh, how much involvement did you have with Nax? Uh, I built one of the wings by myself. Uh, Dana Jan uh, built Nax Ramis. Uh, I, he, he had left, uh, he's, a uh, art director right now at Ready at Dawn. He, yeah, he went after WoW shipped. I took it over and I think I built some of the arachnid, uh, the spider wing I, stuff. Yeah. The spider w wing. And I did complete rebuild on, I think the A-bomb wing. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so did you, uh, you're the one who made us have to play Frogger. <laughs> right? The area, uh, that the area. Be, no, that would be the quest. No, well, the area all, that was leaning up those to Those were right? the dungeon scripters, yeah. Like, oh, okay. so you didn't know what it was for. You just, well, you just know. Dana had never done like a raid uh, when he built that. Uh, again, the spaces, I think Nax was a little bit too big. We could have actually shrunk Nax down a little bit, but okay. um, it's kind of hard. Some rooms were actually not like the, the, the dance. Uh, Oh, what was the, the Hygen dance? Yeah, the Hygen dance. Yeah. Safety dance. Uh, safety yeah. dance. Yeah, but like that one probably could not have shrunk down too much <laughs> for a raid uh, of uh, 40 people. But um, yeah, it's. Was Axe 40 people? Yeah, that was 40, yeah. wasn't yeah, it? 40, yeah, 40. And then they changed it in Wrath to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, but I. that's my take on next mm -hmm. is uh did you know anything about the ashbringer this is what um, relays was asking more no what what was i actually don't remember the ashbringer refresh my memory the the paladin like the legendary paladin weapon it was like in the game files but like i mean that, that oh, wouldn't really okay. be what you you wouldn't really have anything no. to do with that so <clears throat> uh, no no that would be long after i stopped caring about the <laughs> That's the only thing players care about is the items. Right, <laughs> they right. don't care about the dungeons, the pet textures, or, you know. <laughs> Honestly, the dungeons, I'd say, like, are some of the most memorable experiences. Like, everybody remembers their first time in, like, the dead mines or whaling caverns and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, this is one from Ledry the Thane. Uh, how much did Dark, or did Dark Age of Camelot influence any of WoW's like development or like any ideas that you had with WoW's development? And if so, how much? Oh, oh just a lot. It was very influential. Uh, we played that a lot. Uh, all the PvP, uh, absolutely fully convinced that PvP could be so much fun, mm -hmm. and it had turned the tide. Even you know, even the some the, some of the designers were hardcore standouts. Uh, they didn't like the, WoW didn't really come out with a lot of PvP uh, servers because they they were still reserving that belief that because PvP <laughs> wasn't that popular in EverQuest because it was so painful in EverQuest. Yeah. That's why it wasn't so popular. But um, yeah, Dark Age absolutely changed our uh, idea of PvP completely there you go uh, great game um so what did you play like you know if, if you got a chance to play in your free time what, <laughs> yeah, did, what I, did you play i this was from zulace i was okay uh world's first druid on live servers really wow. you were world first world's first yeah there you wow, go dude the and, original uh, druid i was the third person when okay so wow ships uh all the team goes to Fry's Electronics, which is a local. Right, yeah. Okay, they were saying, and Fry's is a, it, it's it's chaos. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the fall of Saigon, really. It's it's you you get there, you're sandwiched in by a traffic jam around the store. There's nothing to eat, and you have to get there early to get parking at all. So to be at the midnight signing. You have to get there in the afternoon okay so there's no food in the area it's almost a like this industrial area in uh, uh fountain valley california and it was but it was a big electronics store that's where we did the signing i didn't go i didn't want to go it, it didn't sound like a good time to me <laughs> I, I, you know it's just wanted I, to play i wanted to play uh so uh myself uh i was the third person this is how i end my book so spoiler alert you know um I was the third person into the uh, 
development area, there's only three people on the team. There's me, uh, Joe Rumsey, who is our server programmer, and Mark Kern. Uh, all of us had the idea of starting the very first uh, character on live server. Uh, Joe beat us both. Oh, uh, there you go. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, by the way, you know, Mark Kern has actually been just instrumental in my uh, book campaign. And I just want to give a shout out to him that, uh, uh, you know, Mark, these guys are great. You know, you should uh, you should talk to these guys. Uh, hey. Yeah. And you know what's funny about Mark Kern? I asked him, like, dude, he, he, he helped my campaign so much. Like my first campaign was just terrible. And he picked me up. And he said, whap, whap, whap. He smacked me around. said, this is the way that, you know, this is how you do a Kickstarter. And he showed me, you know, how to effectively uh, advertise had effect with, you know, he, cause he, he had learned, uh, the pros and cons of advertising and what he cares about most. If you guys aren't following, you guys are on Twitter. Now follow Grums, G R U M M Z Grums, Mark Kern. He is, he's, <laughs> he's a whirlpool of, of controversy and he is just a, he's a good guy to follow. So, um, he's been so helpful to me. And I just want to say, you know, follow Grums on uh, uh, on Twitter because it's it's worth. And he's been pushing classic. Wow, you can thank him for uh, you know really getting that uh, pushing that up to the. So if you care at all, uh, he's probably his ear is definitely lower to the ground than mine. So uh, give him a follow. There you go. Um, there's another. Uh, there's a question from Tailspinner, who's a fe fellow druid. Uh, he's a, he's a, he's actually a Boomkin player. He right. asks, uh, <laughs> do you have any information on the scrapped Dragon Isle? There were some assets that seemed fitting the concept art on the hidden developer aisle. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Isles was not fitting. Uh, it was fitting for dragons, fighting dragons. Uh, the areas are <laughs> way too big. There's caves and caverns that are suited for giant dragon wings to spin around without clipping through the walls. So... It is way too big. It's not a joy to run through or to fly through. It's uh, just old god temples. Uh, cool concept. Uh, Caro, uh, uh, Caro did a real cool concept. It was on the cover of the World of Warcraft art book that came with the original uh, special edition. Hmm. But we didn't use it. So um, it, it just wasn't suited for gameplay. So we scrapped it. Uh, and I didn't take the hint until many times many years later i kept going to jeff or alex off or sabi or Mets like how about the dragon house how about the dragon house <laughs> and it's just i having rated as much as i should have realized uh that yeah it's totally unsuitable for for gameplay so you don't want to play it as cool as a concept as it is it's not playable so at least in at least in vanilla it, it just didn't seem fitting no, no, and, and not even in any way. I mean, it was just, it was one of my first dungeons that I built. So, uh, you know, it, it, I had learned a lot <laughs> about what MMOs need for dungeon design. So um, okay. the, you'll never see it. Yeah. That's such a crazy thought to me that you were you're designing dungeons years in advance without knowing how big the, the group size would be or even what the encounters or mobs or inhabitants would be or where they would. It's, cra it's a crazy thought. Oh, yeah. yes. It preoccupied our thoughts quite a <laughs> bit. And and all the level designers dry, drove everyone around us crazy with questions. Just the camera. We had no idea how far the camera was going to be. That, oh, my that, goodness. That defines yeah, yeah. how high the ceiling's going to be. No, uh, we didn't know see uh you know like elevation changes does that break combat can stairs break combat what if something dies on the stairs and the the, the corpse falls underneath the like you can't loot it i mean there's just a whole bunch of things that we were very much paranoid about stairs and of course all of medicine's con uh concepts were oh black rocks fire is the tallest thing and uh, you know every all these epic high fantasy buildings needed stairs. That's why Karazhan was killed the second time through is because stairs were just everywhere. Um, so yeah, just, no, yeah, you're right. It was, it was pretty sucky <laughs> to not know those things. <laughs> was, there, was there any point where you were like, we're not gonna make it. This game isn't gonna ship, it's oh, over. We're, when I started gonna... writing my book, when uh, I started writing my book, like Dungeons, uh, uh, to be fair, Dungeons, were the most painful group uh 
they were I was at Blizzard and I had faith. I was very successful and I had a good camp, uh, good career uh, for me to leave a good career. I wanted to go to a good company. Mm-hmm. And so that's what actually made me go to Blizzard. I didn't know what the project was when I actually moved all my sh- my stuff out of Cal uh, of New York into California. I didn't know what the game was. OK, uh, on faith that I was hoping it was going to be an MMO. Thank God it was. And uh, yeah, so um, shit. What, what was your comment? I, I, I have lost my trail. Was there any point where you were like, we're oh, not yeah, gonna make yeah. It, we're gonna, yeah. And, and, and so here this I was certain that Blizzard knew what they were doing. All their games were stellar. Mm-hmm. And here I am on World of Warcraft and everything is just a mess. It was a <laughs> mess. It, I mean, we they had no answers to anything. They had no. They were pumping me for information for building 3D levels in my interview. So I couldn't believe that this is what games looked like. And uh, it, because I was a newbie in the industry, I didn't realize how uh, humble games are before they're made. I, I, I'd used, I had worked with Quake 1, 2, and 3 when they were finished games. Uh, the state of a game when it's being worked on it's awful there's no fun at all for many years you know there's no combat because combat is all fake and it's just kind of stupid there's no game that you're actually working on for most of the dev cycle like at the very tail end when the editor works and everything's going then you can actually put the game together but you're actually not playing anything for most of the dev cycle. you're just just frustrated that it doesn't look any better so I just thought how awful this, whether or not this game works or fails, it's going to be a good story. That's why I started writing the wow diary. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. And guys, if you haven't already uh, checked it out, um, I've got the link for you here. I'll post it in the chat real quick. Uh, the Kickstarter campaign for the world of Warcraft diary written by John stats. I've read, you know, over 200 pages of it that John sent me. Uh, I will tell you this, like, If you have any interest in World of Warcraft or just game design in general, you need to freaking pick up a copy. It's really, really good. Very well written and surprisingly well written, by the way, John. I was like, dang, dude, like like an author, man, like professional author. Yeah, you should have seen uh, edition six or or, or (laughs) version six of, you know. Yeah, it wasn't good till a lot the teens. But even on top of that, even if you're not a big reader, it's packed full of cool, like very early vanilla pictures. Yeah. It, it could double as a picture book. Like seriously, that's how visually entertaining it is. Right, and there's and there's captions for. What drives me nuts is when there's never a caption to a picture. That nothing drives me crazier than when there's not a caption. It could just be like a cool castle. I want to know the name of the castle. You know, uh, I just yeah. There's captions to everything. It's fully annotated. It's. Uh, it's 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 a cool book very cool book a lot of cool shots of the myself. early of, of the early world of warcraft interface and as it evolves and some of the early maps like there's a there's one i was talking to s fan the other day we were on a call and uh, there's a particular picture of like the map that was like drawn like the original yeah. like, calendar Eastern yeah. Kingdom's map. it was yeah. mind-blowing man yeah. and, and that wasn't drawn that was painted on the wall of the team two area oh, okay. so you know, uh, and I don't know if you've ever done a mural. I did a mural in high school. When you're up against a wall, you lose a sense of proportion <laughs> sometimes. So I don't know if that was the case, but uh, yeah, it was kind of weird that there was just this this map that w- I'm sure it was out of date before the paint dried. I mean, that's how fast the lore changes. Like Derek Simmons was a uh, he was a recruiter for a while. He came up as a designer. Derek Simmons was a Blizzard uh, uh, before he came to Team 2. Uh, we tasked him with the ability to, we wanted a, a, an intranet, okay? We wanted an update version of World of Warcraft so, you know, all the developers could be on the same page. But the thing changed in every way on a daily basis. It was absolutely impossible. So he, he put this map up and he put all the hot links. By the time it was linked up, it was out of date. And so oh my God. It, and it's something that it, it's it's something that, that 
people wouldn't imagine in game development. Uh, if he updated it, by the time he finished updating it, the map would be out of date. Like it would be a constant, constant, unfun job of, because once the developer, like say, say something changes on the map and this is just the map. It's not class abilities, not what, where people live, like what, you know, just the map. If someone changes something in a zone, they're not going to tell anybody about it. They're not going to stand up and say, oh, I got rid of this extra village in the Barrens. So now it's more barren. They don't tell anybody. The uh, art director says, you know, what? let's let's just get rid of the village. And then, then it, that's as far as it goes. Nobody else on the team knows about it until like maybe the v village disappears. Somebody says something. Oh, well, you know, I thought I had I was going to do quests over there. Then they would find out, you know, who knows when later. But uh, that's just the old cowboy way of Blizzard. I'm sure they've got a lot more uh, organized way of doing things. But uh, now. Anyway. Yeah, certainly. Um, so, I hope so. In, in, say, 2004 when Vanilla came out, did you guys, like, how many expansions in advance were, was on your guys' radar? Wrath of Witch King or Kata? How far in advance was that so planned? Uh, not more than one. Uh, our first expansion was going to be south seas we like mm. booty oh, base. okay we, we like booty bay so much uh some people romanticized about the idea of sailing a ship but there's really no a uh, player controlled ship like but there's really no gameplay you know so we'd kind of like we were thinking of Nagitar being uh a source where the naga uh, that was the days where you know we we thought the naga were going to be a playable race until they're spikes in geometry and the fact that they couldn't mount on top of anything uh or wear shoes yeah or do anything like i mean <laughs> you can do it the naga so <laughs> but once we learned that okay definitely not naga we backed away from the south seas and oh we only did one the reason why we did uh the burning crusade was because we had to keep people off uh, uh off of uh azeroth uh, the zones were actually too, there was too much data. There's, there, there's so much data on those two world tabs. The Eastern Kingdoms is one world tab. Mm -hmm. That's why you get a hard load when you go from there to a dungeon or from right. there to the Calum door. Uh, they're, not, they're on world tabs, okay? So that's, there's no physical connection between the two. Uh, right. Uh, at least when I was in development, there was. Right. So, uh yeah, Joe, the server guy, uh, Joe Rumsey was like, guys, there's so, too much data. There's way too much data. We can't keep adding zones to these areas. So that's why we went to the, uh, that's why we went to the Burning Crusade. Balance. Maybe to let really? the server architecture and hardware catch up with our plans <laughs> of right, yeah. not giving a damn on how much information we put onto a single world world tab so that's where the burning crusade came it was it was of course, yeah. yeah like the bank like I, I i said in the book the bank was just the uh, the size of the database that's how many slots in the bank and how many bags you could carry it was completely decided on the expense of server architecture if every player can start x amount of players uh, uh characters then every character can have so many bags and in each slot a bag can be fit into a bank we figured out how much data like we, we once we figured out how the size of a item uh items have slots in them for uh upgrades uh we had uh buffs and all kinds of stuff that you could do with items uh tailored stuff you can name what is how many bytes would that be not kilobytes bytes, bytes. <laughs> <laughs> then we know the size of an item from there we can extrapolate the number of items each character can have as a maximum for each character per account we know how much server space we have to reserve for each subscription. Then we know how many subscriptions per realm, and then we figure out, okay, this is how many bags we can actually put, put in the bank. That's how we, that's how so, you decide. So there's some, there's like a, a billion different levels. Oh to, yeah, to, that's so insane. many levels. It takes months to figure out how many bags are gonna be on a character in a bank. So a, th a similar thought process led to the vanilla WoW server caps, you know, two and a half or 3,000 people per server, right? 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That, that, that we knew from just performance from <laughs> day yeah. one, once we reconfigured our servers. So Do you know what that exact number was? Was it 3000 or two and a half or somewhere? We, we, between? we were always shooting for 2000 per realm. That's how we engineered the code. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's concurrent. That's concurrent. We can right. 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 Um, could you, could you we, see them uh, upping that number up? I'm sorry to cut you off. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, through code or through hardware. I mean, right. it's, it's, it's completely unforeseen, but yeah, we had an idea with, I mean, that, we also thought concurrency, our numbers would be about 30%. Um, because we figured, well, the highest concurrency on other, other MMOs is 15%. We'll right. Point. Okay. In fact, we'll go crazy. Let's say 40%. Okay. When WoW shipped, the concurrencies were 90%. Okay. Yeah. 90%. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you can't even plan for something like that. So. Right. Well, I just remember because I, I started playing on November 29th. I, I started playing six days after launch. And I remember I have so <laughs> many, if I look at my account history, I have so many one day credits from the servers being down, yeah, just nobody yeah. was expecting any of it. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. it's just crazy to think like how, like, how, how big of a hit it was uh, and, pretty and, much right and, off the bat. And the servers going down wasn't, it was a, it was a hardware uh, configuration. The guys who put the, the machines together, they did it wrong. Uh, it, it took that long to find somebody who, and the servers hadn't been used, certainly haven't been tested as much so that that configuration once it flipped the servers they were overloaded and there were queues and we had to get more servers but they were mostly fine the, the code really didn't change at all yeah so could you could you you know we, we, you know, tips kind of touched on it but like could you see there being like ten thousand in in azeroth um concurrent possibly Possibly, probably not on a single world tab. That would be your limitation. There's yeah. some way of separating those ten thousand onto. Oh, absolutely, you could on if the you, two. If you could, if you could separate those people onto different servers, like uh, charting, charting. Well, well, see, here's the thing. Uh, servers is a word that's reused over. It means different things. Like there's different machines. There's different realms on the same machine. Those are also referred to as servers. And, you know, so, uh, so, so basically, and I actually don't understand what sharding is. So I, I, I don't know what that means, but, uh, if you had instances that that's, that's what can actually put people, but to have a zone with 10,000 people or uh, even a world tab in one, in one continent, I can't imagine maybe hardware has improved to where you can, but it would be that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, there, I mean, there's a lot of good questions coming in. I'm going to move off of Twitter soon. We can go to the chat. I don't want to, I don't want to keep you all night, of course. <laughs> yeah. But, um, we have a question from uh, from Fishy Lawn Gnome, and a lot of people actually ask this question. Uh, what can you share about GM Island? And uh, I guess I guess, what's what's the story? What's the story behind GM sure. Island exactly? Uh, GM Island, I don't know about uh, Programmer Island. As people asking about uh, it, to to make a island like a Designer Island was just a, t a testing bed. Programmer Island was a testing bed. Uh, when you can just go to uh, like. I don't. I forget which world tab it was on. You just copy and paste terrain, and boom, it's an island. You have your own island. It, it, it's it's a ten. It's like a five minute operation of hitting copy, paste. That's a, that's all it. And you got yourself. And, you, and what you can do is you can test things and be assured that it's not going to screw anything in the game. When it works on your island, then mm -hmm. you copy those assets and you just place it into into westfall or the dungeon or wherever it is in fact westfall is where we tested a lot of the uh mobs in molten core really uh, yeah because you just throw ragnaros in there i see think what zero happens. zero zero is in westfall i think that's the, the like the origin oh uh, okay uh but it's also i think where, where the tower is it's a, there's an easy graveyard accessible uh and everybody knows where it is and you just port Westfall and it takes you right there and you just 
oh, okay, we're fighting Baron Geddon today. And that's where, right. you know, Baron Geddon would be flying. Right. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but, uh, yeah. That's cool, though. Um, there's a question from uh, from Adox SF. He says that uh, the Dragon Isles have been teased in BFA. And, uh, you know, since you worked on the original version... Oh. What would you like to see, like, uh, or like, what what would you like things that oh. stick out to you, like, if you can remember, like things well, that you would like to see differently to maybe make it work? Because surely it's going to be completely overhauled. No, the only thing that's cool about the Dragon Isles is the concept, and I, I I can't take credit for that. I mean, they would definitely not use my my mesh, but the Dragon Isles was probably the reference, the tease was probably just the lore reference to Metzen's, you know cool kick-ass idea that there was like old god temples out there that was the original who knows if that's going to be actually the form of dragon isles when they do it so who knows maybe it's uh uh someone will come up with a lore idea of how to kill green red blue dragons without you know killing good dragons because the only bad dragons are black dragons so yeah. we're gonna get sick and tired of killing black dragons over and over and over and over again um, we we kind of actually went forward with the idea of Dragon Isles, not knowing mm-hmm. that Metzen was going to say, "Oh no, all all the dragons are good." <laughs> you know, right, to watch right. through the annoyance of all the game designers, like, "What do you mean all the dragons are good? We can't kill the dragons?" <laughs> oh man, you know that was the re- reactions. Like, "Oh, this is nuts. Why can't we kill all these cool?" There's so now you have to have oh it's a corrupt dragon or it's been under the influence or please kill me <laughs> kill me you know you know that's those are the dragon battles so uh, maybe they'll come up with some lore reason to make all the dragons of different colors killable you know there's a reason to kill them. all right <laughs> so what's what is also like pretty interesting to me is is you mentioned how like the south seas expansion was was initially i mean that, that was the idea for the first expansion right yeah so yeah. now it's like we have BFA, which is essentially that, you know, we're, we're going to Kul Tiras and, and you're, you're seeing all this stuff come now. Um, you, it's, it's pretty like, you know, well, well documented in data mine that Hellfire Peninsula was in the game files very early on. Um, like a, like a, 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 I guess I should say working version of Hellfire Peninsula was was found in like the 1.12 client or not even the 1.12 client. I think it's the 1.1 client. Um, how, like, was, was Hellfire Peninsula planned to be like introduced in vanilla at all? Okay, I'm checking it out. Okay, so that that's the Outland Zone. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, right. there's there's a Hellfire something under Ogremar, isn't there? That's rage fire chasm. Rage, fire, rage chasm. fire. That's right. Okay. Rage fire. Okay. Rage fire uh, chasm or something. Okay. Um, yeah. Hellfire Peninsula was that was always an outland, I think. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, the, so, well, like, so, real quick, what's the question again? I was trying to in, in vanilla WoW, you can sort of like. Out. I remember there's a bug with dead mines. You could bug through dead mines and fall into Hellfire mm-hmm. Peninsula during vanilla WoW. So it was like in the game files. Oh. Uh, it, it was pretty close to what it looked like in TBC. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Matt Sanders had started on uh, Hellfire P- Peninsula before the Burning Crusade. It was always meant to be um, part of another world tab. It was never part of Azeroth. It was right. never part of it. Yeah, absolutely. He was probably doing. Uh, he was actually like it's it's kind of common. I mean, he was probably doing a different technique on airbrushing the textures on the terrain he was probably yeah. seeing what could be done uh, because we had better tools to work with uh we had uh what do they call the outer edge of a brush oh boy there's an inner and outer pressure sensitivity mm-hmm. uh, on a lot of brushes and we only had one we just had a circle and vanilla wow it was very hard the tools were very imprecise we mm-hmm. got a much better tool that's probably what he was doing was just seeing what he could get away with so never definitely absolutely not yeah always part of you know a different world right 
We actually had talked about this before we went live, but can you give the brief story of the Battleground Azara Crater? That was oh, scrapped. That's good. Oh yeah, I talked to <laughs> yeah I talked to Jim Chadwick today. He is a lead level designer on World of Warcraft right now, and he, I, I sent him a text and said, "What was the the the, the, the story with uh, uh, Azara Crater?" And he said that Arathi Basin was such a hit that they just stopped doing another version of that type of gameplay there was just no need to do it um that's kind of what it was just such a hit that why do another one you know that's that's kind of why they yeah yeah so it's just and sometimes that happened they, they'd work on a map and you know a gameplay thing would be learned and it would make that obsolete like dragon isles or you know Karazhan or Ashara crater Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think Azura Crater was supposed to be a 40 man. Maybe. So ma maybe even Alterac Valley kind of filled that gap as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah. He's. Oh, in his text, he said AB. Maybe he meant AB. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. the V and the B are right next to each other in his text. <laughs> so forget about what I just said. I was actually talking about. AP. AP. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. It doesn't matter because we have war fronts now, anyways. So it fills both gaps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I got a question actually. Uh, do sure. you think, you know, based on everything you've experienced in, in the WoW development process and stuff, um, do you think we will ever see another vanilla World of Warcraft, any a new MMO with as much cultural impact and popularity as vanilla WoW, or do you just think the market is? Is oh, not gonna, yeah. oh, totally. I, I mean, it might not be a game. I mean, it might be like the metaverse type of uh, a Ready Player One type of thing. Um, I mean, okay, not that type of thing. I mean, but, you know, it might not necessarily be a game. It might be just more of a three-dimensional type of virtual reality. Who knows? I'm still waiting for some application of virtual reality to, uh, you know, impress the world grab the world by the horns you know but uh oh totally totally absolutely in fact i would say it's a certainty you'd have to i mean uh, i you know wow is a game i think there's other applications that could be you know that physical interaction with people might be important you know who knows but i i think that there's going to I don't know if I, uh, if you're asking me if another MMO is going to come along. Oh boy, I don't know. Not certainly. I don't think within a long while. Not for a long while. Okay. Well, they're incredibly expensive to make, so there's a huge oh, barrier yeah. of entry, right? It's not that they're. Ex oh, People have plenty of money. Like there's a lot of you know sugar daddies out there who just want to make a. <laughs> You know, have their own world. You know, there's a lot of uh, Googles and Facebooks out there that could just fund it. It's not money. It, it comes down to the failure rate. They're so hard to make. They are so hard to make. Uh, yeah, money is not. It's, it's whether or not you can get the right team, uh, get the right backing. You have to have realistic yeah. investors. That's actually uh, the, one of the people. To have actually a realistic investor that will delay the launch and keep throwing money in. And frankly, it's finding an honest studio that the money, the more money you put in something, the more it attracts dishonest, disreputable people. And, right. you know, and sometimes a, a, someone who's worked on an MMO could just say, Hey, this is where I'm going to cash in, you know, so it's hard to tell the honest people from the dishonest people. And let's say everybody's honest. It's hard to tell the competent people from the incompetent people sometimes because it's, it's, it's incredibly hard. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Especially so. in this age of like Kickstarter MMOs and like crowdfunded MMOs, you have so many developers that they say the right things, but they might not have the technical expertise to follow through. 
Right. Or they have the technical expertise, but they're not capable of seizing the funding for whatever reason. They're not marketing people. Right. I'm, I'm finding that right now. Like, mm. uh, I'm talking to guys that are Kickstarters. They are great salespeople. They say, John, you're a creator. You are not good <laughs> with running the campaign. Like, for me, it's physically painful sometimes. I feel my soul just leaving when I say, don't forget to share it with your friends. You know, like, when, <laughs> when like, you know, when I say, I just like, I lean against my desk and I just go, oh my God, am I that guy that I'm saying that? That feels painful to me. I just want to make my book or make my game and just, that's what I want to do. But I don't want to be the salesperson, but you yeah. gotta. So. Yeah. It's a lot like Twitch Prime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, the, uh, so, so we're going to, we're going to take some questions from the chat here in a second. Um oh. I have one more question. We talked about a lot of zones that, you know, they're, they're, we can physically see it on the map, but you can't enter. They're inaccessible. Um, above Stratholm, like the Nax area behind Stratholm, uh, there is a right. zone there. What was that? Is that supposed to be just like the inside of Stratholm or? Yeah, that's okay. uh, Stratholm uh, to get. Let's see. Yeah, so when you go into Stratholm, you, I can't remember, you probably do see um, the landscape on the horizon. I, I don't know if, I don't know. I, I, I can't remember, but that's usually what it is. Dungeons are so dis disproportionately large to like Razorfin, you can actually see, you can't hide Razorfin because of the canopies, but dungeons are gigantic. Gigantic. They are so much yeah. bigger that the whole TARDIS effect, where you know it looks small and from the outside you go in and you know. But yeah, Stratholm I think was one of the areas that it, maybe originally they wanted to do it on the exterior zone and who knows. But yeah, that's Stratholm. There you go. Um, okay, let's take a, a few more questions from the chat uh, before we wrap it up, guys. Um, and of, of course, after this, I'll, I'm, I'm going to continue streaming after this. A few more questions in the chat. I'm going to continue streaming after this. Uh, if you guys, this is your first time watching Classic Cast. Uh, we post. This is our 12th episode, and we post all of these on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can you can go down to the link below, YouTube.com/sfantv. Uh, you guys can check out the the previous episodes of Classic Cast, and of course, sub to to Tips and stay safe on YouTube as well. Follow them on Twitch, Tips Out Baby, and Stay Safe TV. Um, and and yeah, we're we're all on uh, Classic Cast. Uh, every uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna shoot to do them once a week. Uh, we'll see what we can do leading up to TwitchCon BlizzCon. So yeah, you guys should be very excited for that. A uh, little little uh, sneak peek, but um, but yeah. So just from the chat, um, let's see here. Um, uh, this one's from Felleran. Okay. John, John, do you know about the WKM room in Orgrimmar, and do you know why it's there? Yeah, this is, uh, it's documented. Yeah, you can look this up. It, I think that the, the, the initials are wrong, um, which is a shame. <laughs> uh, it's a tribute to a developer who died uh, on uh. a different team. And I don't think anybody on Team 2 really knew the person, but for their brother, they put in this little thing. Um, but the initials may have gotten screwed up. Uh, that is my guess at what happened. I don't know. I actually don't remember when that was because I, I know the guy who built Ogremar. So, and I was in his office. So I, I may have just missed it when this happened. Um, so I don't know what happened. It may have been, I, I think he passed away after like during vanilla wow but i just mm -hmm. my, my my head was into uh, my my editor so far up <laughs> that i didn't hear any of this so right uh, i didn't you know but that's what it is right uh it, a lot of people have been asking about this is, is there anything that you can share about like project titan no, if you, if you want to get into about, it, okay. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I could, but you know, I think that's the great thing about being a self publisher is you kill your mistakes, you know, uh -huh. and uh, it's uh, Blizzard, you know, that's that's their business, you know, yeah. they uh, they don't want to talk about it, and when they do, I'll I'll have something to say. So uh, there you go. But there's no reason to talk about. It. I mean, there's so many games that are like in my book. I mention half a you know half a dozen 
games uh, that got canceled, you know, Blizzard games, you know, um, what was the, uh, I, my favorite one is, oh, geez, what was the real time strategy game? Starcraft Ghost? Oh, no, 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 no. Came out before, maybe uh, while Starcraft came out. They made, it was like a, somebody else bought it. THQ bought it, and they released it. Oh, boy. Let's, uh. Did THQ, was no, it Command no, and Conquer? No, it was, it, no, no, no. It was a uh, spacefaring expansion. Uh, no, it was a spacefaring uh expansion game it was a real time oh jesus it was like a, no it was like mutu it's like mutu basically they made this game and they they killed it internally and then they got an offer from another studio to buy it okay <laughs> they <laughs> bought it and they went they Good want deal. to pay for this okay here it is yeah. you know and uh, yeah. they <laughs> bought it because they thought blizzard would spin gold every time and it was absolutely terrible my roommate played it and it was a real-time spreadsheet it was the great thing about real time is that you watch little characters okay this is a space game and so you see these little numbers changing in real time it made <laughs> no sense at all okay uh. and it was just the the dumbest game and somebody it sounds like day trading or something uh yeah and i wish i knew the name of that game oh is it eve online no 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 it was uh there's a lot of there's a lot of guesses at the name yeah look at thq uh, thq is the publisher of this game and uh <laughs> they uh, bought it and they they, uh, they took the hit uh, but yeah anyway lewin has asked quite a few questions uh and i'm trying to tr trying to get Four one of his answers answer. yeah <laughs> but uh lewin is asking uh did you guys have any intention of old zones being revisited at any point you can, cause sometimes you can see like higher level mobs in certain zones. Uh, you know, like you might. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, that, that's, uh, uh, yeah, sure. Um, just to like change things up. Uh, yeah. Just to like, rather than killing all these high things in the high level zone, you know, put, it's kind of cool, but th there was always that danger of lobies, running the pax imperia there you go pax imperia pax eminent imperia. domain oh. there we are that was the game pax imperia anyway the <laughs> uh yeah they, they they would mix that up a little bit they used to have like cross zone quests too and because it people yeah. would think oh this would be so epic this quest goes all the way from one zone to another and play players hated it because it was all downtime you got this quest, but you can't turn it in until you go to this other zone. And most quests, uh, Tips is dying over there, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It, you, yeah. you liked them. I kind of like, like the too. idea, but when you're questing and it's just one of the quests that leads you out of the zone, but you've got all other quests in your quest log, it just becomes this annoyance <laughs> that you have to leave the zone and then do this. And sometimes you're leaving by yourself and the quest target is, is an elite mob that you need, you know, group. It's just, it just didn't work out. So they tried some things. I don't think, I don't think re I don't think, uh, skulls in zones are a good idea because you can act like a creature with a skull on it. That way it gets deadly. I think that they kind of veered away from that, but yeah, they tried that once. That's a short mm -hmm. answer. Okay. I mean, one thing I liked about those like cross uh, zone quests, just like the, like you said, the sense of scale and epic adventure. I do agree that that sometimes, uh, like in some, you know, cases, doesn't really work out. But things like you know the Anixia quest line or like the mix the, the missing oh, yeah. quest. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh totally. Yeah. No, I'm talking about just garden variety. Oh, you're in Stranglethorn, and now it says, oh, you want to, you know, Swamp of Sorrows is where you. Oh, like what? Now what? You know. They tried a couple of those in Alpha, and uh, no. Well, they're still all, they're still all over the place. I call them FedEx quests. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I kind of like them. Like I like the uh, what's it called? Like the star, the something, the heart. I can't the I can't remember the hand and the heart. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah. I can't remember the name. Yeah, but I couldn't remember it. But uh, you know that was one quest that like I always think of that whenever I think of FedEx quests. Like yeah. it was just like sending you all over the planet. 
Right. Yeah, it's a cool quest. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a, you know you know what quest? Uh, and actually, it's the it's like the main quest chain in Duskwood, and I love Duskwood. Duskwood oh, is probably everyone loves zone. Duskwood. It's everyone so good. Loves best, best zone. You can't so good. do wrong with Duskwood. Yeah. Yeah. So with Duskwood, uh, there's the there's like the the Stalvin quest chain. That, you, know, you basically you're, you're running back and forth, and like I remember times where like I would I would kill myself. Just so I could like spirit res and then like AFK and go to the bathroom, <laughs> like while my res oh, yeah. signals was running out because I just did yeah. not want to run all the way across. <laughs> <laughs> but I love how the yeah. zone looks. It's it, like it's it's one of my favorite zones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a good zone. To... Yeah. That's kind of why I put the extra catacombs under Karazhan is that it's such an easy set to work with. Like the spooky gothic stuff is so easy to make cool architecture for. Like we all have a visceral reaction to bones and spooky stuff and it's just easy. Mm. When did, when did you start designing next Ramus? How early on? Well, I didn't, uh, again, I didn't design X next Ramus. I, 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 I built, uh, Dana did all of next Ramus. Uh, he didn't finish one quarter and I think I redid the spider quarter. So like the design of it was all Dana. Um, I kind of filled in, I, I started, boy, this is probably after WoW shipped. Yeah. Right after WoW shipped, I took over cause that's when Dana left. I took over what he was working on. Yeah. Okay. But you said, you said you had AQ 20 and AQ 40 built like two years before WoW came out. Well, yeah, but AQ 40, I had rebuilt over and over. There were so many changes cause it was. It was very inflexible. Um, in my article, I talk a lot, uh, a lot about. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this article. <clears throat> it's about all my dungeons. I basically liner notes. It's, a, it's a long article, mm -hmm. and I talk about the, uh, the first and worst dungeon was, AQ forty, and, the number of times that I had had made revisions trying to accommodate the gameplay. And it really should have been scrapped. Honestly, it should have been scrapped and rebuilt. I how long how long did I spend talking about the the willingness to redo your work, right? To get into game development, and right. uh, well, I guess when something takes months to build, the willingness to redo the work is not as strong <laughs> as it should have been. Uh, I guess it's it was okay. I mean they. They, they allowed mounts for the first time in dungeons because of that. Um, I just didn't know what I was doing when I built it. I had no idea. I had no idea how big the raid was. I didn't know if the spaces were suitable for combat. I actually pictured people fighting in the tunnels. That's that. Uh, we didn't, we were also like, they were describing it like Diablo where there'd be waves of monsters attacking you instead of you chopping on one or two monsters like the EverQuest paradigm. So, we really had no idea like it could have been anything so it just turned out that aq wasn't uh, uh fertile ground for a good gameplay for our our, our mmo yeah so yeah lots of revisions so uh, i so let's let's take one last question here and this has been asked a few times um do you know of any like secrets you know little any little easter egg fun things that that you or somebody else may have put in the game that to your knowledge has not been discovered yet or is there anything that you know comes to mind <laughs> that you're just like you know what i really like that i did this i amuse myself i want to say every single quest in the game is a reference to something you guys think you guys know easter eggs you know very you know the tip you know the tip of the sword i mean just the tip it just mm -hmm. the little tip of the iceberg is the, what the you get. Tip, most tip. of it is like um, personal references, uh, names of people's cats, neighbors, teachers, classmates in college, you know, uh, and and obscure literary characters, uh, even references to outside. Like there's something in everything i want to say i'm probably exaggerating there's probably a quest designer who actually i actually do know a question that, that they didn't do a lot of references but many many of them i've looked at the references and 
it's 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 a fraction of what there are now some of them are like i know that there's a cat in red ridge sean cards put a fc that's the name of the cat okay he, he had his own cat at that fc were the initials for cat you know right, so, right. Uh, that was just the name of their cat <laughs> and so they put their cat in you know but just little things like that that when i know and what's funny is that sean sean would put that in the game and he wouldn't tell anybody he wouldn't tell anybody it's not like something that did he would just i think it was just a natural thing i've never done quest design but maybe when you're just coming up with names you just make this up and then you forget about that it's a reference to something right. <laughs> you just move on you know yeah so you wouldn't happen to know where Mankirk's wife is right uh no i do <laughs> not no there's mm -hmm. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, I was talking about another podcast. I carved the name Lisa in, in, in the front uh, of Ankarash. Uh, then uh -huh. you'd have to look at it with uh, uh, in wireframe mode to see. And Lisa was the receptionist. Uh, uh, she and Dana were dating, and she would hang out with us. And I, just, I freaked her out by putting her name. She thought <laughs> she was going to get in trouble or something. But I knew it wouldn't actually be visible unless you actually – uh, could see it, but it's still there. <laughs> yeah, that's Hopefully. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, uh, guys, I, I think it's about that time. We've uh, been going for quite a while now. Um, guys, if you liked Classic Cast, we have uh, 11 other episodes. This is episode 12. It's over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV. You guys can go. You guys can sub there, sub to Tips Out Baby, sub to Stay Safe TV, uh, and also check out their Twitch channels as well. Uh, Twitch.tv slash tips out baby and stay safe TV. It's all the same. Uh, if you guys enjoyed Classic Cast, please hit me with follow. Uh, we're going to plan, like I said, we're going to plan on doing this. Uh, we're going to try to do it once a week. I'm, I'm, I'm moving next week and, and I'm, I'm making the jump to going full time next week. So it's going uh, to be busy for me, but we're going we're gonna to aim to do one, uh, I guess, the, the following week. I mean, this week is kind of this. Today is this week. But, uh, but yeah, this, this next week we want to start doing them weekly. So yeah, that would be. Uh, That'd be big time, but um, and John, this was awesome, man. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, for this was, was crazy, yeah, crazy, crazy so cool. Much. Yeah, thank you so much for joining thanks us, for man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun, and and you guys can check out his book. It's the Wow Diary. So uh, yeah, it's uh, very very exciting. The links in the chat right there, and uh, I'm gonna continue streaming. Uh, if you guys wanna stay and hang out, and you you guys uh, you guys wanna watch me stream, then uh, then we can do that. But for now. Uh, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a short little intermission, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Those of you guys who uh, don't want to watch me stream, <laughs> <laughs> see you guys later, thanks, John. Guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for bye watching. Bye. Take thanks. care. See you later, guys. Take care. All right, we're off, right? Hello. Looks like we're. I swear, these freaking guys, dude. They can't they can't keep their mouth shut. Okay, it's unbelievable. You just got to be patient, dude. You just got to be patient. That's why I'm S-Fan the patient. That's why that's my title. Guys, you know what time it is.